Okay, let's focus, guys. That depot's starting a couple seconds late, but that's okay. So, the big thing is swapping add-ons around is going to allow us to be much more efficient with our build order. So, the big problem we've been running into is basically there's things like the starport just sitting there doing nothing for a long period of time, right? Um, what else is wrong with the build? Well, you know, our tech lab is, uh, tech labs are so late, we're taking forever to get stim and combat shields. So what we're going to do now, we get the barracks, we get the gas, very standard stuff. We can grab an SCV and just send that across the map. No worries. My mouse cord is getting yanked on a little bit. Let me just fix that quickly. Oh, my mice are tangled, that's why. Let's see what's up. Okay, we got it. Uh, let's put guys on gas. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So this SC, this guy did not actually get clicked there. We'll hide that behind the expansion. And we'll also put that on hotkey number three as well, so we can easily pull that back. So yeah, the big difference here, guys, is going to be setting up camera location two, number three, uh, number five, number four, and then the rally point there. Beautiful. We want to go reactor and orbital, same as always. By swapping our add-ons around, we're going to have faster stim, faster shields. We're going to be, other than building the very important first things we need, like a siege tank, a viking to go scout, we're going to be sent to the camera location. And, oh, look at that. He's trying to kill my SCV. So let's just, we've seen an expansion. We can bring that home. Let's get the depot there. Cue that back. Beautiful. So we're going to use the factory in the starport to build the safety siege tank, put it on the high ground. We'll get the Viking out and that'll give us some safety. But right after that, we're going to be building add-ons for our barracks. And that means our barracks are going to be getting up and being effective so much quicker in the game than what we've been used to. This is really going to help us out. It's going to make such a big difference. Um, so that's going to be really nice. And this is going to also take a bit of getting used to. And it's something where some people have said, oh, isn't it a bit early to really be add-on swapping too much? Definitely, we don't want to be swapping add-ons constantly, but we just have a few pre-built parts in our build where we do it. And I've color-coded it in the notes so you can see we're still trying to batch it up. We're not just swapping one add-on at once. We're trying to <clears throat> do two things at a time so that we're not constantly like looking back at it and messing it up. Now, let's just talk about the basics for now. We're building SCVs. We've put on second gas, always waiting. The moment that finishes, we're already tapping the all upgrade orbital button. So the moment it finishes, it immediately does. Or you can just hold the button down. And the, natural, main, the main base is finished. We can rally to the natural. And when that orbital's finished, remember, is our first macro cycle. Okay, let's go for Marines. Get a tech lab. And of course, that starport. Beautiful. Now, I did forget the bunker this game, guys. Probably should have built that. So let's go build that bunker now, shall we? Better late than never. Just build two SCVs per command center, drop a mule, build a few marines, next is a tank, and then what do we do guys? Depots, right? It's always around this time when we need to start depot production, so let's go over there, let's start one depot, and then after building that bunker we can build another depot. Alright, we can also grab four marines, put those in the bunker, and another macro cycle, build four SCVs. Build some more marines. And we want to start that viking as well. Okay. Let's try and get that viking started ASAP. Grab that SCV. We forgot to queue that to do something else. Gary's going to build a depot. And then Gary and Bruce can both queue up into that main base. Where they're going to be building all the rest of their depots up here. Alright guys. So we've got a tank out which is great. Now this is where things get interesting. Because... Soon, we're going to be swapping add-ons. But first, let's do another macro cycle. Let's make sure we don't mess that up. When we're learning new things, it's so easy to forget our basics. So what we're going to do is we're going to lift off the barracks, the factory. And we're going to swap the barracks onto the factory tech lab. And the factory is going to build a reactor at the same time as the starport builds a factory. You want to do these two things together, okay? So we then want to start stim. Keep building marines. We can send our viking for a scout. And I'll queue that to land in the mineral line, though we're not going to look at it. We'll get better at that later. Let's build a few more SCVs. Drop some mules. Build a few more marines. Build a depot or two. And guess what? It's barracks time. So let's build four barracks. So we can bring these guys. One. Two. Three. Four. Now... 
It's a little bit easier if we built those barracks on these reactors, but if not, that's totally okay. Once those reactors are finished, we want to swap off, build a tech lab, and swap off, build another reactor, okay? And that's our add-on swapping. Now, after the four barracks, we're still following our build. We want to go double gas and an engineering bay. And time for another macro cycle. Last few SCVs here. Build SCVs, build mules, build marine, build tank, build medevac. Can't do that. So just build two depots here, which you can see we don't really need those depots yet, but just building them ahead of time. Let's control click the barracks, shift onto that barracks hotkey. And then we've got now we can start tank production and medevacs only now okay all right so these two barracks actually let's let's always try to do this together if you can do it this way like that or if there's scv in the middle that's not going to work right so if you guys go like this it's going to select the scv right so what you want to do is you want to click shift click and then we want to press that lift button this is why lift is so important to move to somewhere easily to reach for you guys lift lift the natural l key is way too hard put those there and then this barracks is going to build a tech lab. So notice we built one barracks on this reactor, two next to these reactors that were still being built, swap them on, and now we have one, two, three reactors and two tech labs. Okay, awesome. All right, guys, well, we'll do another macro cycle in a sec. Obviously, I'm taking a long time to explain all of this. Let's go. Last mules dropping, no more SCVs required. Let's go Marauder, Marauder, Marine, Marine. Tank, Medivac. Depot, Depot. And then we want to get combat shields, concussive. And if we're not spending so long explaining and talking about the basics, obviously this would all be way faster, guys. Um, let's get plus one weapons as well. But because we're taking a long time this first run through to explain the basics, it's just one of those things where it's like, oh, okay, you know, we need to take a little bit longer. A few more marauders and marines, tanks and medevacs. Let's go over to OBS, make sure I'm not missing anything in chat. Cool. Doesn't look like anything too crazy. No. Nope. Alright, guys. So we queued up more units, queue up more depots, a few more marauders, lots more marines, remember? You need to queue that marine button a lot. A lot of players, when they're queuing marauders, they get in the habit of building like two or four marauders. But if you've got three reacted barracks, you need to queue it, you know, not just six marines, but twelve. Okay, guys, look at that. That's a lot of mutalisks in our main base. We can try to run the SCVs away, but it is what it is. Send them back. And we're gonna build two turrets there, two turrets there. Shift click back on mining. Rebuild the SCVs. And what are we going to do to defend Mutalisks? Let's grab these guys. Shift 2. And I'm going to swap to mostly marine production. I'll queue up just two more marauders, but mostly marines. And what we'd really like here is if you can get an armory. Let's put some guys on gas as well as finish those depots. Stim the marines here at these Mutalisks. Trying to fly around by the looks of it. And... Ooh, okay, that's lucky. I don't know what he's doing there. <laughs> he's trying to... Mutas don't outrange Marines. He's trying to micro like it's... I think Caldus has been watching some Brood War. Anyways. Um, <laughs> I don't think Caldus has used Mutas much before. <laughs> All right, lots more Marines. Oh, yeah, that is really easy to lose. <laughs> this is <some> Starcraft. <laughs> it's not a C1. <laughs> you can't fight the Marines. <laughs> Unless it's like four Marines. <laughs> Alright, let's move forward, guys. <laughs> that was just really funny. I was like, oh, he's not looking. And then I was like, oh, he is looking, but he doesn't know. <laughs> I'm like, well, he's he's finding out. <laughs> Oh my god. Pig, when do you naturally go for the third command? So that's a good question. This is what we call a two-base all-in strategy. I've had a few people saying, hey, I'm doing the bronze to GM, um, but I keep dying at the four-base stage. And I go, well, no, you, you lost 10 minutes earlier than that. Because this is a, it's a two-base all-in. There are games where we take a fight and it doesn't quite kill them, but it still trades pretty decently. And like the game's still very close. And we do kind of eventually, like sometimes we do a transition with it, but it's never our plan, right? So what we do is if if the fighting stalls out or whatever, or we start floating money at some point and there's a lot of back and forth and the game keeps going, at a certain point, what we do is, well, we obviously make plus one armor as well. We basically box some workers on our natural and we build a third and a fourth base at the same time because we're like, oh, I've just built a round of units and I still had a thousand minerals floating. Okay, cool. So we'll, we'll build two command centers. And then what else do we do? Second engineering bay and armory. 
because that's going to allow us to make two two upgrades. We don't add any more production. Um, obviously, because we're still in a kind of gimped position, we're still doing a, a very aggressive YOLO play. So we're trying to still kill our opponent. Technically, what would you do next? Just to give you guys the knowledge of well, what does a, a macro setup look like? Well, you would never go for all this production, all this army before taking a third if your plan was to go three base forwards earlier, right? If, you, if you're planning to play a macro game, you would have taken the third much earlier. And that's a very different build order. And we'll teach you a lot of those build orders as we get to the higher leagues. Uh, maybe in Plat, we'll teach one in one matchup or something like that. I'm not 100% sure just yet. Definitely in Diamond League, we'll be doing more three command center builds. Um, I think for, I think you can get GM just playing two base builds and it's a good way to learn. But what else would we add? Well, five barracks is only enough barracks for two base. So you could add three more barracks, often with tech labs, gives you more Marauder ghost production. That's, that's common. I don't think that's the best thing to do though for a lower level player. I think for lower level players, it's much better. And you'd need to build a lot more workers to, to support those barracks and these command centers, by the way, if you want to play to the longer game. Just building the command centers themselves is not is only going to do so much, right? But what else would you do? Well, I talked about it a lot in my last bronze to GM. One of the most common transitions I did was just get two more factories. And if I built two more factories with tech labs, I could build three tanks at a time rather than one. And I could also then get vehicle weapon upgrades because I'm really committing to lots of siege tanks the longer the game goes. And that's going to allow me to have ranged, you know, big, big artillery behind my bio, essentially. Whereas if you're just on mass bio and you're only building tanks one at a time, if you lose this army, all these tanks go down. Well, what are, you, what are you going to build one tank at a time? The next fight, you've got two or three siege tanks and you're like, well, I'm fudged. Um, because if they've got splash damage, you need to have the long range siege tanks because then you've got the longer range. You can force the opponent to fight into you. So if I have a bunch of tanks here, my opponent can't just pick at me, move in, move out with Colossus or Storm or whatever, right? They need to fully commit. And that if they're forced to fully commit, well, that allows me to spread my bio out like this, where when the fight comes, I just press stim, hands off the keyboard, and my bio is effective. But if I'm running back and forwards, look at what happens. The bio clumps up, it dies to splash damage like crazy. That should be good. Any reason for going for Thors rather than tanks, says Bullia? No, no, we're going siege tanks. Uh, obviously, going for a Thor would have been nice versus the Mutalists because it does do splash damage. Or Widow Mines are also technically very good there, but those are because we're doing a very aggressive play. We we wouldn't really be wanting to think about that just yet. Um, in general, though, Thors beat Broodlords. Um, they do pretty good versus like carriers and stuff as well. But usually, that's that's much later in the game. So yeah. Just be building tanks three at a time, and you go from that. But uh, yeah, this is a two base all in, so I think this is the, the whole point of actually having a plan and a direction in StarCraft is very important. A lot of players, they they, they copy Bronze to Jam, but they, they don't fully realize it's like, hey, this is, you gotta go for the attack. If you don't go for the attack, there's no point in playing like this. All right, guys, going to the next one, we've got a TBT this time against Odyssey. Let's just keep refining these add-on swaps and smashing through in Gold League. I think this is going to be fantastic. Let's go for the barracks. Let's go for the Garrus. I'm holding back on doing my little pro gamer things, guys, little, little tryhard things. I saw that uh, some people in the comments were wanting to play a drinking game. Whenever Pig says a uh, pro gamer move, try hard or GM stuff or something like that, that's the drinking game. You have to drink each time I say that. All right, guys. Gonna do a little pro gamer move, make him rally from the inside. Oh, you see that? See that? We're gonna, we're gonna oh, you set up the camera location. Second base, third base, fourth base, fifth base. Anyone playing that drinking game, watching Bronze to GM? I don't know why you're playing a drinking game while you're watching Bronze to GM, but I do read the comments, and uh, I hope you guys are very drunk now for being silly enough to uh, to bait me on that one. So, anyways. Um, <laughs> Reactor and orbital. There we go. Notice I don't have to look at the orbital to do it, guys. Just using our hotkeys like a smart, like a smart player. And he messed up his barracks placement. He's doing reactor first as well. I think there's going to be an expansion, so I'm already going to queue that to go home. Let's build my expansion. Doo -doo -doo. Why did I think it's an expansion? Because I saw a worker going in the direction of that base. Okay, guys. Let's build that second depot and then camera location one. Shift back on the minerals. Build SCV. Build mule. And let's go over there. Yep, see? So we see that, but we've already told him to come home, which is great. So just doing things ahead of time wherever possible. 
Set that rally point on top of the ramp, guys. Always safer to rally units on the top. If you start rallying units out the front, it just gives you no time to run away if you get surprised by an attack. I see so many players do that, and it just it triggers me to no end. I'm like, man, you're just going to lose so many games to dumb stuff. Build a few more SCVs. Let's get a second gas. Let's not play too fast, guys. I am um, trying to sink back into the rhythm of playing nice and slow after being away for a little bit. Uh, bunker never went up, did it? So we can use our scouting worker to build the bunker. Not too bad. All right, guys. Uh, build another SCV. Build some more Marines. The other tell of it being a one Rex expand is there was only one gas. Very good point from Bullion in the chat. Advanced scouting info, not important for us at this stage, but something where it's never too early to introduce you guys to those sort of concepts. Whereas if there was two gases, they can't afford a very quick expansion. Let's make that orbital. Build some more SCVs. Mules. Let's get the starport tech lab. Put guys on gas here. A little bit disorganized with how I did that, but it is what it is. Build a few more Marines. Put those guys in the bunker. Notice we're at 16.33, right? So we can select the command centers and rally to the expansion. Good stuff. Now, we actually want the barracks uh, factory and the starport next to the barracks normally, so we can do the swaps. That's a really good point. We've messed this up this time, guys. We want barracks, factory, starport, so that our buildings are easy to swap the add-ons. By doing it down here, we've made a big mistake, which have made our life much harder. I'm a little embarrassed I've done that. On the other hand, I'm kind of okay with it. Let's just do our depots up here, by the way. Gary and Bruce are going to start building depots. Why not build a wall-off? It's TVT, guys. You don't need a wall-off. We're in Gold League. We're starting to adapt to each matchup. How cool is this? Oh, my God. Let's keep building our TVs. So, yeah, in future, always build the factory in the starport there. I'm a bit embarrassed I did that. On the other hand, I think it's really good because it shows you guys what not to do. So, the more mistakes I make, the more you learn, right? All right, queue up a few more SCVs and mules, guys. Now, let's do that first add-on swap, okay? So we're going to lift off the factory. We're going to lift this barracks onto the tech lab. And then what we want to do is we want to kind of do this at the same time, preferably, just so we're not having to come back and do it too much. Lift the starport, shift-click, select both of them, and they're just going to build two reactors, okay? Oh, you have to tab. Okay, so guys, what I do here is I build reactor. I then tab, build reactor, Okay. Let's build a stim, marine. So funny because I normally don't think about doing these things. I just do them. Build SCVs and mules. Build marines. We can't build any other units. So build depots. And it's barracks time. All right, so let's go, guys. We can go one there, two there. And the other one is just going to build its own tech lab. So we just go there and queue them back. So remember, one of them builds on the first reactor. Two of them build next to these to swap onto those. And that's going to swap off build a tech lab. That's going to swap off build a reactor. Let's do another macro cycle. Lots of SCVs and mules. Build some more marines. Queue up another depot. We've got a lot of supply free, so Bruce can have a, a bit of a smoker. And let's go double gas on the natural. And an engineering bay, okay? And if you prefer that engineering bay in the main, doesn't really matter, guys. I'm just in the habit of building it on the natural because I do these two things at the same time, right? All right. Now let's make sure all of our rally points are at the front. Oh, what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to queue our Viking to scout through the main. Shift click, shift assault mode. So we're telling it to move here with a right click, right click there, and then shift whatever your assault mode hotkey is. So that's automatically going to land in the mineral line and cause our opponent problems. Let's do another macro cycle. Build a few more SCVs and mules. Those will be the last SCVs we need. A few more Marines. Oh, we don't want to build too many because we've got to do add-on swaps. And let's build depots. All right, so let's do this, guys. Shift click. So what I should do there, guys, is shift click those. So you go click, shift click, lift, tab, lift. Or you can just go press one, lift, press one, lift. And then you can just go click it, build a tech lab, click it, build a reactor. You can see it's quite intensive. If you guys prefer shift clicking to select both, and then you go, okay, I've got the starport selected. You can see that down the bottom. Tab. Build tech lab. It's up to you which method you use. I manually do things. So I'll do that in the next one the way I naturally do it in my own games. But the problem is I naturally do things with a much higher mouse speed, which is why I get away with this sort of stuff. Uh, and one more tech lab. Remember, you got to build one more tech lab. All right, guys, let's go. Next macro cycle. Last mules to be dropped. Marauders. Lots of marines. And then we want tanks, tanks and medevacs. We don't have the reactor yet. Gary and Bruce are going to keep building depots. Now, obviously, I'm taking a long time to explain all this. Uh, let's get combat shields and concussive. Cue some marauders there. So we definitely want to get way quicker at this as time goes on. More marauders, more marines. 
build some more depots, build another tank, build some more medevacs. That was a little bit out of order with the macro cycle. When you're learning something new, it's really easy to break the macro cycle, guys. Don't do that. That's bad. I have no idea if my Viking killed stuff or not, by the way. If they scan you, you might want to scan outside your base because it often means they're scanning right ahead of their attack, right? You know that thing that we do all the time? Turns out other Terrans are smart too, guys. They do that as well. Let's queue a few more depots, make sure I don't get supply blocked. Let's bring this tank down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to box our whole army. And what are we going to do? We're going to use that deselecting. So right click, shift left click, right click, shift left click, right click, shift left click. Come home and then control two, remake our army. So we're sending some scouts out so that I'm not surprised if an army comes in, okay? And look at that. We can see an army up there. Oh, what's this? Oh, there's a drop right there, guys. So we're just going to stim and attack move. Nothing fancy. Notice how units are stuck behind each other. So what I should have done there was right-click, A move. Right-click, A move. So they move forwards, right? All right, let's do a macro cycle. We don't need SCVs. So just marauders, lots of marines, tanks, and medevacs. Set the rally point to the natural. Box these guys. Shift one. Let's get plus one armor as well. We don't need high sec auto tracking. That's a misclick there. We can unload the bunker. Box those guys. Shift one or shift two. I guess I'm using two, aren't I? I've got to remember that. Build a few more depots. And let's do another scan. Actually, screw scanning, guys. Let's do A move, deselect marine. 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 And then we're going to go control two and bring our army back to the front. Just so if we run into enemy marine spotters, our marines will fight back. Okay? We can send another one up there to kill that marine. And then control two. All right. Lots more marines, marauders, tanks, and medevacs. Queuing up a lot. Boxing, shift two. And it's time to go for our big attack, right? Now, remember, this is TVT, guys. So what happens in TVT? We always end up with the tanks in a bit of a standoff. Swap to Viking production. Okay. Speaking of which, <laughs> fox these guys. We're going to stim and A move down here. And we're going to try and siege that tank, okay? Try to box the new units coming out and fight with them as well. Now, I probably should have pulled my workers here. Stim these guys from there to try and defend. Whew, we just barely managed to defend there. All right, let's try and scan ahead. My army is bigger than his army. Because you can see, my blob is bigger. So we're just going to A move up there. And we can just fight. We don't need to do anything fancy here, guys. There is a tank on the high ground, which is kind of annoying. That's okay. We can... Oh, apparently those marauders are in range. I didn't even mean for them to do that. Let's siege the tanks here. And we can just kind of spread our army out in this scenario. All right. What are we going to do? Marauders, marines, tanks, and vikings. Let's box all these guys. A move to the front. Shift two. Scan ahead. Not much to hold us off, right? So I think because our army's so much... Actually, he must have had a lot of marines waiting in the main that weren't with that army. We're just going to move up and try to siege this down. We can stim these marines. If you want to actually kill it, you want to move underneath it and then they can kill it. Now you can move a medevac forward for scouting here. And you can see that's really going to help us out. And we can just do the leapfrogging with the tanks now. So what you want to do is shift click these back two tanks. Right click, shift, siege, right? We can move a little bit of bio forward. And we want to hold position our bio usually in these scenarios so they don't run forward, right? Remember, whenever we look away, they always end up running forward, don't they? Oh, those guys are getting shot. So let's bring these guys forward now. And we can start building liberators as well. Oh, oh, is he, is he trying to fight me right now, guys? Looks like he is. And he's trying to break out. Remember, often you don't need to force your way in. They're the one who's like, oh god, I gotta break out of here. They will come out to fight you. They could go across the map and try to counter drop you, which is why it's important to let your units rally at home. If you rally across the map, even those two medevacs getting in my base could have absolutely wiped me there. GG's. Let's let's look at the build order again and look at how much more awkward it made it with where my factory was placed in terms of my add-on swaps. I have to move this barracks all the way down here. I gotta move my things around. It just made things very uncomfortable, didn't it? So that was a really good point. Bullia caught up on this immediately in the Twitch chat. Shout out to Bullia. Factory starport there means all your add-ons are all next to each other. Really easy to swap around. You guys will hear me when I'm casting Terranverse Protoss. And I'll say, why do they always build their buildings next to the ramp? The Adept always gets in and scouts their build. That's because the Terran is prioritizing efficiency with their build. Where they're saying, I just want to be able to swap my add-ons around really nicely. 
I don't care if they scout it by running up my ramp. And I sometimes get annoyed by that because I'm like, come on, man. Information is so important in pro level TVP. You got to hide that info, but they, they don't do it. What if we leave a tank that covers the main so we don't have to react as hard to drops? You can do that. I don't think a tank on its own defends you from drops all that well. So I would I would rather that tank come and make our push front uh, stronger and put some more marine spotters out. And if like we keep dying to people dropping our main, you can also like build like a depot here, build a depot out. Like building a few just a random depots on the edges can be really nice for spotting drops coming in. And that's especially useful if you guys are using select all army key. I know not everyone learns proper control groups. If you guys are using select all army key and you have bad map vision, start sending SCVs around the map more because those don't get selected by select all army and build those depots and that sort of stuff. But as long as you keep your rally at home and you're good at producing units, you should have a big clump of units 90% of the time that you could just box and stim and A move. If you find I always get dropped in my main, I always struggle with it. If I just leave one siege tank here every game, it makes my life easier. Go for it. If you guys like that, go for it. Just leave a siege tank there every game. If it works for you, it works for you. Don't ever be afraid to experiment with things that feel like they should work for you. This is a strategy game and you're the friggin' general. So if you're not willing to go, that I think that's a good idea, let's try it. You're never going to get better at StarCraft. If you go, I think maybe this will work, but I'm not really sure. Try it. Give it a go for a few games and it might pay off. Only thing you want to be wary of is a lot of players start doing that where they get dropped one game and they're so like upset with losing and they're so unable to just handle losing one game that they're like, I need to every game leave a siege tank in my main because one in 20 games I get dropped there. And if you're changing your build to defend against something that happens in only one in 20 games, that's obviously not you playing very good StarCraft. If it's every third game, suddenly it might make a lot more sense. You're like, oh, you know, that pays off a pretty good percentage of the time. It's only one siege tank, why not? That's, that's kind of the general thing you want to be paying attention to, right? It's like players who build mass missile turrets in their main base at five minutes every game because one time a guy rushed a really fast battle cruiser. That's not good StarCraft. What happened with my uh, my Viking, by the way? Did it, did it do any damage, guys? No, two Marines were on top of it and it kills one of them. Yeah! Cool. And I didn't even look at the scouting because we're just focusing on the on getting used to the add-ons. We'll focus more on the scouting and the interacting as we go on. It's going to be a big focus today, but because we are changing the build, I want to make sure you all understand that has always got to be highest priority. Get used to the new order of the build. Once that feels a little bit more like second nature, you can start doing other things. How do we know that it's not second nature yet? Well, for one, look at how much money I have. And I'm not really ready to push any earlier than I am in a normal game. So... That's actually something where, where it is that way. I think, by the way, with the add-ons, I'm just going to be very manual. Click barracks, lift land. Click barracks, lift land. Click factory, lift build. Click starport, lift build. I think we're going to keep it very manual. I don't think there's any really easy shortcuts for add-on swapping. So I think just manually selecting each structure and telling it what to do is probably the best thing to do here. Um, I, was, I was kind of hunting for an easier method. But like tabbing between the units actually to me doesn't feel more immediately intuitive or easy to do. Even if it's a bit easier on your mouse speed, you need to be more coordinated with mouse keyboard, which it's going to be one, some players are better with mouse. Some players are better with mouse keyboard coordination. It's going to be different for everyone. So we'll just see how it goes. You'll notice Odyssey, the moment they moved across the map, they stopped macroing. So what did Odyssey do here, guys? That was the biggest mistake. Odyssey moved on the map and immediately stopped spending their money. Like, they've actually got five barracks up. They've got a factory and a starport. What do they need to do? Well, they don't need any more SCVs. They just need to queue up, like, 10 marauders, 30 marines, three tanks, two medevacs. But what do we see? We see two medevacs queue up. And then they go back to looking at the front. So this is classic interacting with the opponent. Hurts you more than it helps you. So... The answer is obviously never interact. Just sit in your corner of the map and focus on your macro. No, that's not the answer either. The answer here is Odyssey just needs to remember when I move out on the map, um, queue up a shitload more units. Also, why are these Marines on the map at this point? Is this the player whose replay I watched in the Discord the other day? Odyssey, are you the guy whose replay I watched? Because this is the same thing you were doing in that TVZ. I think, I think this is, I think this might be the, it is. Yeah, yeah, don't. There's no reason for you to move these Marines out like this. Just wait for the tank push. If you're doing this build, just keep building. Focus more on your production. 
and wait until you've got like three tanks at least and just keep pumping units and push a little bit later with a much bigger army and bring your siege tanks and go for one big push because you're moving around the map with your marines and medevacs is really distracting yourself from the fundamentals you're doing really well up to the five minute mark and the moment you start thinking about doing this weird kind of fancy marine poking on the map it's slowing you down your early game's really tight you've just got to really work on that five to like eight nine minute mark of queue up way more units at that point because your income's really rolling and uh, gather them all up before you move out, mate. You'll you'll absolutely smash because your early game was very tight. So you're actually doing really well, but uh, it's always hard carrying that into interacting with the opponent. So just keep it simple for now and just focus on a big, big direct Marine Marauder tank push. Yeah, yeah, get in the Discord. There's been a real lot of people helping each other out, discussing strategies and... Um, the, the number one thing in StarCraft is always, if you post a replay, people can actually see the, the massive difference between your conception of what you're, you're trying, what you're doing in the game, your, your idea in your head, and what you're actually doing. And uh, most players are very blind to the fact that they're not really playing the way they think they are. They always think, oh, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And people watch it and they're like, no, you aren't. You suck, dude. <laughs> yeah. You said you're really good at macro. You, you floated 5,000 minerals at the six minute mark. They're like, well, no, I mean, but I... You, like, it's just hard. There's so many details in StarCraft, it's hard to look at and absorb everything at once. So just the more people you have, multiple minds working together. Uh, StarCraft's a deep game. There's so many people out there with more experience than you. So tap into that resource pool, you'll get better. All right, guys, we've got a Protoss player now. Um, we are going to be going, once again, getting those add-on swaps more and more natural. So let's make sure we build all the buildings closer to our ramp this time around. Let's grab that SCV and go hide behind the natural. <clears throat> Keep building these SCVs for now. Rally the next one onto the gas is a nice thing. We don't need to do that, actually. I'll, I'll still just keep manually pulling off onto the gas. But normally what you do as a, I guess I'll show you just this once, but we don't need to do it every game, is you rally that guy, you put that guy, and then you change the rally point back to the minerals. Now, obviously, clicking on the command center the way I did, I'm showing you what I did, but you don't need to click the command center. I could just obviously use the hotkey. We don't want to be unnecessarily clicking things. Always use those control groups. We got a third base there, fourth base there, fifth base there, camera location right here above the production. So whenever I want to swap add-ons, we're going to use that camera location and that's going to make things really easy. Reactor and orbital goes down, guys. <clears throat> cool guys in the mineral line. Taste my drill. Ah, it doesn't matter. It's just one SCV, one probe. It's too late for a cannon rush anyway. And uh, Cybercore gateway. Oh, he tried to kill my SCV. <laughs> luckily I uh luckily he didn't pull it off there all right guys no worries all right let's build the depot up next queue back to minerals and we can go drop a mule build an scv gonna rally that to that side as well make sure that scv is rallied no worries get our first few marines building interestingly no nexus yet guys <clears throat> so Technically, our opponent could actually be very aggressive, but we're not doing advanced scouting yet, so I don't know that. I don't know that. And actually, we see a Nexus, so it is just an inefficient build. And that's why, that's part of why you don't want to focus on that advanced scouting. People are like, Pig, shouldn't we be doing the advanced scouting too? Explain to us. And I'm like, no, no, because your opponents are going to do just bad build orders all the time. So you don't want to, you don't want to focus on it too much. So we're going to go barracks, factory, second gas. Chat's already pointing out second bunker, the bunker, but... Normally I use the scout to build it lately. That does mean it's a bit late though. Because the Nexus was so late, that SCV isn't really back on time. So that, that is definitely delaying it a bit more than we'd like. Normally we like it to go down a little bit quicker there. Anyways, uh, a few more Marines. Let's get the orbital, build a few more SCVs and drop a mule. And we can immediately start a starport. I think um, one thing we noticed is the starport was often a little bit late to batch up with the factory in the previous two games. So let's make sure we start that straight away. Rally it to the natural. Now we can get that tech lab, build two marines. All right, let's rally to the expansion. You might be wondering why are you doing that? But remember, the reason we're going to be doing that, put those four marines in the bunker. First macro cycle. I'll explain it in a sec. Drop mule. Shouldn't drop a mule on a patch that already has it because notice it has to get bounced off and find a different patch. Uh, okay, guys, so two Marines build a tank, and it's time for Gary and Bruce to start building some depots, okay? Now, we want to go for a Viking straight away as well, so I'm trying to just tap that, because remember, I want to be able to, once that Viking's done, lift 
off the factory, build a reactor, and also build a reactor there as well. Let's do another macro cycle. We're going to queue up four SCVs, drop a meal. Queue up two marines. Remember, we don't want to queue any extra build units on those just yet. Let's go for these. We will open that depot so the SCVs don't get stuck on the outside. And Gary and Bruce will go up here and they'll build lots of depots there. All right, guys, so it's time. This is what we're talking about. Build a reactor, build a reactor. How nice is that? And actually, I'll build it right next to it just so it's all lined up correctly. And then we lift the barracks, put that on the tech lab. Beautiful. Let's send our Viking through the main base and then it's going to go shift click assault mode. And we're going to put that on number three, okay? Control group three. Let's put our tank up here on the high ground. Cue that to siege. Let's do another macro cycle. We just did a lot of things that aren't macroing. Four SCVs, build some mules, build some marines, build stim. And it's barracks time, isn't it, guys? You could say depots, but we're skipping a depot cycle because look, I've got plenty of supply free. One, two, three, four, and back. And look, the reactors are now done. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna single click. Just lift, build reactor. Lift, build tech lab, just like that. Now we're gonna control click the barracks, shift five. Let's take a look at the Viking guys. Now you can see, cause we didn't target it, it went to attack his fighting units. Whereas if we actually shift click on some probes, it kills a lot of stuff. So if you either hold position the Viking so it doesn't chase fighting units or just focus fire, it'll be much more effective. All right guys, macro cycle time. More SCVs, last SCVs, build mules. Build marines. We can't build anything else just yet. So let's go depots and we're done the macro cycle. So let's go double gas. Let's get the engineering bay. And we can lift those. So I notice I just boxed the barracks because they're the same structure type. I can box them. There are different types of structures. I can't do that. Build a tech lab and let's start the production now. Okay. So full macro cycle. We don't need SCVs. We just drop a mule. We go Marauder, Marauder, lots and lots of Marines, build a tank, build two medevacs. Beautiful. And once this tech lab's finished, oh no, we've got to go full macro cycle, guys, full macro cycle. Forgot to build the depots. We can go combat shields, concussive, plus one. You see we're a little starved for gas because I was a bit slow on taking these. This is going to be really nice. So... The main advantage of this is, and we're still not doing this anywhere near as tight and fast as we can, because I'm just taking my time to explain things. We can get stim and shields up and all these barracks building units so much quicker. We might be a little slower on tanks. Uh, like we won't be hitting necessarily quite as many tanks, but it, overall it's just, it's very, very powerful. So let's just keep queuing up those depots there, queuing up an extra round. We're saving mules for vision, remember? So all we're doing, two marauders, Lots and lots of marines. Build another tank and then medevacs, medevacs once we get the gas. Which of course we are a bit gas starved. But We're since we've queued up stim, shields, concussive, plus one. That's a big bit of our gas expense. Now all we're really spending gas on is marauders, tanks, medevacs. Which is why you're going to be a little bit more able to keep up that medevac production two at a time. Which is why I'm just sitting here tapping the medevac button right now. More marauders, more marines, more tanks, more medevacs. And just keep building depots. All right, guys, so check it out. We've got Stim, Shields, Concussive. We've got at least three tanks. We've got a good-sized army here. Let's rally to the natural so it's a bit easier to grab these guys. Shift 2. Let's unload the bunker. Shift 2. All right, guys, let's send some scouts out. Right-click, deselect, right-click, shift, deselect, right-click, shift, deselect. Bring home. Control 2. Shift 2. Let's get plus one armor. Lots of marauders, lots and lots of marines, and then a siege tank. If I don't have enough money to queue medevacs, guys, I don't really care. Because we've already got a bunch of medevacs here. Just having non-stop units building is huge. So we're going to move across the map. We see Colossus. Let's move to the middle. And what we're going to do is we're going to send another marine ahead. So we're going to go deselect, pull back, control two. And now we're going to A move to the middle. But we've got a marine scout, which will give me warning. More marauders, lots more marines, another tank, and... Guess what, guys? We saw Colossus. Let's scan. What count is Colossus? Oh, we've already got five or so medevacs. Let's go Vikings instead. Vikings are really good. Now, we could attack into his army, but because with a siege tank army, we like to get in a very dangerous position and force our opponent to come to us. So we're scanning. We're going to try and move down here and siege those tanks. And let's spread the bio out. 
Let's move a medevac forward. Actually, you know what, guys? So what we want to do is we're going to take two medevacs, a bunch of this bio, and we're going to stim down there. And we're just trying to make him come into my army. So we're just saying, come and fight me. Come and fight me. And these guys are just going to attack there. Oh, I accidentally told my whole army to move. Stim A move. Uh-oh, I broke my spread, guys. Very naughty. Very naughty. Oh, no, very bad. Now, I should have also targeted the Colossus. But it looks like it's good enough, guys. Let's stim at that guy. That was actually really bad. I thought I was still controlling those guys down there, but I accidentally reselected my control group and told my whole army to do it. Now, we still just had overwhelming numbers and a good position, so it doesn't matter. Our opponent's on three base, so if we gave him another minute or two, I think our opponent would have had a better force than me. Remember, if you see battery overcharge, you just right-click it with whatever units are nearby. Luckily, we just had enough stuff there. Um, the reason I took my hands off the keyboard is because the first command with the keyboard and mouse by telling those units to clump up was a huge problem. It was a big mistake for me, and it really cost me by clumping those units. So in that scenario, all I want to control is pressing stim when the fight happens. Nothing else. Why? Because he's got Colossus guys. Remember, if they have splash damage, you don't want your army to clump up. Arguably, you can A move because it's just two Colossus as long as your Marauders are up front. You have to be really careful because if he pokes forward with this army, you A move all your bio and he quickly pulls back. Your Marines are mega clumped up and they're chasing into the Colossus and they're getting roasted by those laser beams. And which means as soon as he pulls back, you need to pull back and then you need to respread your units out and that sort of stuff. Pig, should we do a little bit of macro while doing the push and then wait for our opponent to come to us? Absolutely. So I was thinking of doing that, but I said, well, why not force him to fight me right now? So what I could have done is I could have queued up a few more units and brought another wave to the front. And I often did that. This time around, I didn't do it. By the way, check it out. There was an observer watching me the whole time. So little tip for TVP, guys. Build a missile turret about here. <laughs> it's it, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to clear out the most annoying observer positions, usually, if you put a turret about there or there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just decided to prioritize this. And if he had some units there that I couldn't push into, I would have pulled them back grabbed these guys from home, moved them across the map, built another giant round of bio tank queued up, and then I would have looked at ways to continue forcing him to fight into me. This, In this case, I saw his whole army was there, so I felt like if I poke in the natural, he kind of has to fight me. In general, macro is good, and it'll help me one or two minutes from now, but I've already got a big scary army on his side of the map, and it's just a matter of prioritization. What's the better one? Pig, what should I do though? Should I always prioritize the macro and just sit there with my army, or should I always prioritize pushing in? Well, sometimes your opponent has two upgrades that are just about to finish. Thank you very much for the love. Uh, so anyways, basically notice how I forced him to fight just before 1-1. One, one. So to finish that previous point, guys, I'll, I'll, I'll say a big thanks to Matt in a second. What if they're about to get three more Colossus out and 1-1's one, about to finish? Is me having another 10 Marauders and 20 Marines rallying across the map gonna help me? Or is forcing him to fight right now just before those upgrades what's more important and you can see it's <clears throat> it's massive if we can if we can force him to fight right now it's huge now you don't always know in game are upgrades about to finish is his army about to get much stronger the general rule that you can apply is if your opponent has a giant scary looking army that you're afraid of sit back in a very conservative position with the siege tanks and wait for reinforcements right because you're not confident. But if you think your army's bigger and scarier than his, the sooner you force the fight, the better. That's it, right? Because generally it's gonna line up with the guy who's been really greedy and has a billion upgrades and all this tech that's about to kick in has a small army that you give him a minute or two, it's gonna get very scary. Whereas the guy who's already got 60 zealots out here and it's a big giant scary blob of units, that's the guy who's not on that good an economy who doesn't have good upgrades and tech and everything about to kick in, and his army is probably getting worse with time. This doesn't always apply, but it usually does. So in general, bigger, scarier army, you can wait a little bit longer, make sure you're taking the perfect fight. They've got a very small force, kill them now before they turn their greed into a gigantic army. Because look, our opponent's on three bases, I'm only on two. He's got double upgrades, he's got triple robo and the Templar archives and a robo bay. If I gave cool guy a little bit more time here, I would have been in the doo-doo. 
All right, let's look at some of our games from uh, Silver. We had an 8 minute 14 push, uh, 835 with seven tanks, five medevacs, four marauders, 51 marines, 150 supply. If I go to 835, I don't actually have as much stuff. So it's very similar in terms of overall number, right? 835, seven tanks. TVZ 943 move out, but I'd lost some units to a, a roach attack. So we're still definitely ironing out the kinks with this, and I'm trying to, you know, explain the basics of how to execute. But it's it's looking like we are slightly behind on our benchmarks from the previous version of the build, and that's what you're going to expect. You will, whenever you change your build or learn something new, you will suck at it for a little while. You'll be worse at it. You're not going to be hitting things as cleanly. We're hitting a little bit later with less siege tanks. Admittedly, I think we do have more bio, uh, more, more Marauder Marine in most of these attacks compared to the previous benchmarks, Marauders especially. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're, we're maybe slightly behind or close to even, so we haven't really seen, like, a huge, like, oh, this is so much better, but we're also consistently floating money, right? Around the time all those buildings are going down and stuff, so we can definitely speed up when these barracks start. As we get better and better at that, the earlier we start these barracks, <clears throat> the crisper the build is going to be. So, for instance, right... <clears throat> Uh, I'm sure there's an argument that I don't need these two depots quite so early, right? Do we really need 78 splite? But that's okay. We're still giving ourselves room for error, making sure we have a little bit more. But you can see I've got the money to start those barracks at about 435, 440. You know, we could start those barracks much earlier. We start them about 30, maybe 40 seconds later than we could. 30, 40 second difference on those barracks obviously adds up a lot. Still getting used to the build order, figuring everything out. But uh, I think this is just something you want to expect as you're playing, is it, it takes a while to kind of get the hang of everything. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going into the next one, a TVZ. Now, it's funny because so far, we're doing a gold build. It's meant to be better. I haven't hit any better benchmarks. The build hasn't seemed significantly better. The results haven't been any better. Even though, let's be fair, I'm probably playing a little bit faster than I was in the previous shows. So looking at that, Obviously, this is a worse style and I'm teaching you guys wrong, right? No. So the one thing I want to touch on in this early game is that's what we call a results-oriented mindset. It's where you basically do something and then you immediately look at the result and if it succeeds, you go, it's good. And if it fails or doesn't immediately succeed, you say it's bad. The problem is you're forgetting that you're doing it wrong. When you start learning a skill, you're not good at it yet. You can't judge anything on how good it is as a system, as a build, as a, a, a decision you're making in StarCraft until you've actually gotten good at executing it. So whenever you're trying anything new, expect to be worse at it initially, expect to suck at it. And as long as you have faith in the system, does it logically make sense to do these things? Are we developing the skill to add on swap that we're gonna need throughout our entire career as a StarCraft 2 Terran player, yes. Are they just making up that it's a good thing, those pro Terrans, and they're just doing it because it's, it's fancy and looks cool, or is it because it's actually way more efficient, right? Obviously, it's because it's way more efficient. So you've got to just kind of have faith in the system and its ability to, um, to do stuff. Now, that was weird, guys, because that spawning pool's already done quite early, but there's also a very fast hatchery. I, I mean, I see a hatchery, so that's all I'm probably going to react to for now because we don't really have any more advanced scouting than that. Just kind of curious. Bit of an odd build order, but that's okay. We're not going to we're not gonna, we're not going to change anything. We've seen an expansion. We bring the SCV home. We can build the bunker with it when it gets back. Keep building SCVs. So just remember to give yourself time. Uh, and let's build that factory closer, shall we? Yeah. Give yourself time to learn the skills. Expect yourself to be worse. And remember that StarCraft 2, every time you learn something new, you're investing in loss. You're investing in being a bit of a shitter for a little while until you get the experience to actually do the thing properly. So just be patient and always focus on improving the system. If you're always with everything you do in StarCraft, just waiting for the victory screen, and if the victory screen doesn't come faster, harder, more frequently than normal, oh, I must be doing it wrong, this is shit. You're gonna have a very unhappy StarCraft career. <laughs> StarCraft's a lot about just Kind of going, hey, am I getting better at this thing? And you open the replay and you're like, oh yeah, I did my add-ons swapped a bit quicker. I felt really clean and more organized with it. I knew exactly what I was doing this game. If that's the case, you're doing better. And that's all you need to focus on. All right, guys, so let's talk more about the basics here. We've got an orbital on the way. Let's put those four Marines in the bunker. 
start that orbital command center. Alright. Just rally our units here. Let's build another SCV. We're on 16 there, so let's rally to the natural. And we want to build a siege tank now that that's done. No worries. Alright, guys. Let's queue up another SCV. And when this orbital's done, that's our first macro cycle. Let's go. Command center has been build a few more SCVs. Drop a mule. So remember, guys, I talked about scouting and how their build looked weird, but we're at a level where it doesn't matter just yet. Doesn't matter. Now, because this is TVZ, guys, if we build a Viking, we should always clear the pillar, maybe search around the edge of our main, and then we can go scout with the Viking. It's always good to get a few nice free kills first and foremost. Put the siege tank on the high ground for safety. Oh, I forgot to build depots, guys. Uh-oh. All right, we might need to do a supply drop because we are a bit supply blocked here, okay? So queue up a few more SCVs. Do a supply drop for the marines and then we can uh get ready to do the lift off so we can go remember guys reactor and another reactor okay so the viking we a move and then we shift a move along the edge of my main and then we can go scout out our opponent's bases with some shift clicks okay all right build a few more scvs and guess what guys it's barracks building time one two three four Look at that, 4 minutes 30 we're starting the barracks this time. That's going to drastically change the build. I wouldn't obsess over that, just focus on doing things in order. But I'm just kind of pointing out how if we're a little bit quicker on some things, it will make it a bit cleaner. Anyways, those depots are probably a bit earlier than we need them. Let's lower that one. Build a few more SCVs, a few more marines, and let's go guys. So we're going to build a... Don't build it there because we don't have enough space. Always leave big openings between your buildings, guys. So notice we're going to have a big avenue for siege tanks and stuff like that to fly through. We can see our opponent has a third base with lots of drones on it, so he's building lots of economy, that's good. Let's not forget the double engineer, the double gas in the engineering bay. Remember, we got those really late last game, and I was very gas-starved. Build that depot, and then queue Gary and Bruce into the main. Control-click the barracks, shift onto the barracks hotkey. Did I miss a barracks, guys? Wasn't a barracks meant to build on the left as well? Where did that go? Okay, one of my barracks didn't build, so I'll build that now. Let's lift those. So just box them. Lift, lift. Land, land. Stim didn't start. Did I forget to build swap this barracks over? Maybe I did. Anyways. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I queued a fourth barracks on the left, guys, but it is what it is. Marauders. Okay. Uh, getting a bit excited. Build SCVs. Those are the last few we need. Drop mules. <laughs> <laughs> build marauders and marines build tanks build medics. even me because i'm like i want my pro gamer instincts are like hurry up you're behind on your macro hurry up um build upgrade we want to build a tech lab on this one that's going to be very late this game unfortunately apparently i tried to build a barracks in an illegal spot got blocked by something who knows guys all right so last mules no more scvs needed Marauders, Marauders, lots and lots of Marines, Tank and Medevac, no worries. And of course, what are we missing? Depots. So Gary and Bruce need to build depots. They had a bit of a break because we had so much supply free, but now they need to build extra depots. So hitting a slight supply block is not the end of the world, but when we're in gold, we should still always be keeping that supply a bit bigger. That's why it's a little dangerous to do it the way we've been doing it. Notice I've always been starting with Gary and Bruce. And then they're overbuilding depots, and then I'm having to take a break on building depots. This is awkward because it doesn't fit in the macro cycle. So what we can do after this game is we can basically just start with Gary a little earlier and then add Bruce at the right time. And that way we don't need to do this stop and start with the depots that ruins things, okay? All right, let's go for concussive if we don't already have it. More marauders, more marines, tanks, and medevacs. All right, guys. Well, we're looking pretty decent now. Let's keep building depots. There's an Overseer in my main, so let's just grab some units. Come up here and see if we can kill it. Box all these guys with shift, and let's put those on my army key. And we can go... Oh, look at that. It's a Nidus Worm, guys. So the Overseer came... I was literally just trying to kill the Overseer, but now we can just leave these guys here in the main. So what you can do here is you could put a Siege Tank like that, and that's covering pretty much the entire main base from Nidus Worms, okay? Build more Marauders, more Marines. And basically what we can do is we can shift click that, remake our army group so that it's not in um, our control group anymore. So everything else is here at the front, including the bunker. Now, if he's trying to come kill me, you could argue, do I really need to move out right now to go kill him? 
build some more depots? The answer is, of course, no. Let's just scan outside, make sure there's nothing out here. Looks like he's trying to um, do that. Now, I could stim my whole army to kill that, or I could just stim those guys at the front. And you move up nice and close, and then you A-move. Right? That's how we do it. All right, guys, let's send some marine spotters out. Shift, right-click, deselect. Right-click, shift, deselect. And then we want to push up this central path. So we, we spent some marines, and now we A-move out here to the staging zone. Let's do some macro. More marauders, more marines, more tank, more medevac. We can get plus one armor in a little bit as well. Let's just make sure we queue up two more depots. Make sure we never get supply blocked here. Armor upgrade comes in. Box these guys, shift two. All right, let's go forward. Scan ahead of my army. I don't know where his army is. Is it still all in the Nidus Worm? It's going to allow me to get... Oh, it's down there. Okay. So let's siege these tanks, guys. And let's try to grab... Oh, Stim. Oh, he's there as well. So what you could do is you could try to run these bio back a little bit if they're a bit too clumped. But don't ever do it as a whole group. Let's move these tanks forward. Yeah, he just attacked around two corners. That was the worst fight of all time that a Zerg could possibly take, guys. Build some more tanks. Box these guys. Shift two. Alright. Let's try and move another tank forward. I'm going to put that up there on that ramp. And we're just going to keep boxing these units. That guy just got blocked, so he didn't move exactly where I wanted them to. And these guys just going to keep moving forward. And remember, we're never moving everything at once. If you want, you can micro a small pack. You can try hard with a small pack of guys as much as you want. But if we want to do active micro, it's like that. Just box everything, stim. And because we killed this whole army, now we can probably risk going for what we call the YOLO. YOLO. Don't waste your time attacking eggs, guys. Eggs take forever to kill. Make sure you move past. Stim again. And then you want to try and make sure, what if he's morphing Banelings up here? So we'll box some of our units. We'll go up the ramp. And you just want to make sure you're hunting down anywhere those Banelings could be morphing. It's very risky to shove on creep like that. Because we were already right outside his base, we saw a mass of Banelings come in, hit absolutely nothing. We felt like that was his whole army and we could risk shoving in like that. It's a little bit riskier. If you want to take it slower, go for it. But I think that works out. So let's go back and do a little bit of build analysis, guys. Because I think we may have fallen into a bit of a bad habit here, right? With our depots. Now, this game, we started the depots late. But in general, what have we been doing? Start Siege Tank and start two depots. Is that really necessary? If I start my Siege Tank and immediately start Gary building depots one at a time, I don't think it's the end of the world. It's 36 supply. If I start building a depot here and just keep building depots with him, I think I'd be okay. And then we can add Bruce... Preferably to be building depots only after those extra barracks are up. So remember that as we were refining the build a little bit, guys, we did try to make sure that the Gary and Bruce builders were coming in a little bit later. Depot optimization. Gary only joins Bruce as the second depot builder after the four racks goes down. And this is something we've forgotten in the first few games today. I've been so focused on teaching you guys add-on swapping. I forgot one of the fundamental things we learned in the previous episode. This is totally my fault. I skimmed rewatching the episode, but it's been a few weeks because I was overseas at a tournament and I forgot this point. This is why it's really important to look at your build and kind of go, am I actually following the build correctly? And I'm not. I'm going double depot builder Gary and Bruce from really early. And that is really hurting the 4x timing initially. And then I've got too much supply. So I'm spending the minerals on other things and I'm stopping them from building depots. The problem is if you skip building depots for a macro cycle, you forget to restart it on the next macro cycle. So you've literally got to, got to just focus on that. So that's a big mistake that we made so far in this one. Let's, uh, let's make sure we remember that, okay? So tank production. And remember, we could add a little note here if we want. Just a little reminder for myself. I'm going to highlight this in. So we're going to give ourselves a nice little color-coded reminder there because Gary building depots. And then once those four barracks are up, Bruce can join in as well. Just a nice little reminder here. Bruce can join Gary soon after this. Now, these are not things that you guys necessarily need to write down in your build order. I'm writing them down because I'm forgetting them. 
If I'm forgetting something, I write it down. I make a mental note. It become, I want to bring it to the front of my brain and make it way more important because I'm clearly not focusing on it enough, right? I'm like, I'm, I'm forgetting it. So it's just one of those things we want to try and make sure we, uh, we try to prioritize. All right, guys, we got ourselves another TVT. We're actually playing, uh, this is apparently cool guy who we played earlier, who I guess is a main Terran. Because they were only 2,500 with Protoss before, but their their Terran is 3k, which is... What is 3k, guys? I think that's closer to Platinum 2 or something like that. I don't know, Platinum 1 maybe even. So this should be a little bit of a harder match here in the TVT. But uh, I think with starting just one depot at a time with Gary and only starting the second depot building a bit later, which is what we were doing last week, and I went and forgot like an idiot... It's gonna, it's gonna be so helpful. So I, I really feel that change is gonna make a big difference here in the build. It's gonna allow us to be a little bit smoother and um, that should really just iron things out a little bit for us. Make sure this is a bit tighter. Uh, I wanted to focus a lot more on multitasking, but we need to get the build down a little bit more consistent first while playing nice and slow. Um, <clears throat> All right, let's go. We've got... That goes there, that goes there. Uh, we've got to send a worker across, so let's do that now. Go for a scouty scout, hide behind the natural. Super standard stuff. Let's make sure our camera locations are good. Third base, fourth base, and fifth base. Cool. <clears throat> All right. Orbital reactor, very standard stuff, guys. Natural main. Top of ramp. Main, natural, top of ramp, natural, build command center. Notice before I get 400 minerals, I'm already ready, tapping that build command center hotkey, trying to get that built. Just try to do things ahead of time, guys. Still trying to focus on all these basics. Look at this opening, though. It is getting much more tight. Okay, so let's build a SCV, drop a meal. Okay, uh, what have we got up there? Barracks, double gas opening from my opponent. Oh my god, doesn't matter. It's not, not important, guys. Just build some marines. Uh, double gas is pretty standard for TVT, to be honest. It, it doesn't really change anything that we're doing. It just means he'll exp be expanding a bit later, or maybe not even expanding at all. Uh, but it changes nothing that we're doing, so you don't need to think about it just yet. Let's build a factory there, guys. And gas. I'll build the starport over here. This, this one's a little bit cramped. You can build three structures here. So I guess I'll do three structures here, leave a few spaces, and then do another row of structures there. Did he just kill my... Oi! Oi! You dickbag. I didn't even notice that. He just killed my guy. Uh, <laughs> what a dickhead. Alright, make sure these guys are queued back to mining since we just clicked them on there. So he's distracted us a little bit. We can move this guy forward just so we can see if the command center goes down without having to move him. But we don't need to check that till 3.30. Oh, okay guys. Let's bring our marines up here. Try and attack with some SCVs and then run them away. Don't just chase him. Just trying to get him to pull back a little bit. Bring these Marines as well, guys. And we're going to A move. So we box those. We went shift two and then A move. Try to put guys back on gas. Build SCVs. Build Marines. We want to build a Hellion as well. Because any fighting units to help us out here is going to be big. Turns out we've been proxy reapered. But with one of the barracks at home and two of them on the other side. So shift two. Uh, let's put those... Let's put a marine in the bunker, because otherwise that doesn't do anything for us. Let's build the starport, try to get back to the build order. Notice we didn't start the orbital, so that's definitely an issue, but because we have the ledge, we're fine. Great thing about having a bunker is as long as you've got one marine in it, it looks the same as if there's four marines in it, and only a very advanced player will notice that you're not doing much damage. So let's try to run these SCVs away. Luckily, we're looking at the right spot. Let's grab these marines. We'll try to chase those guys down. Let's go back to mining now. Build more SCVs. Drop mules in the main. Build marines. Build a tech lab. And it's time for Gary to start building depots, so let's do that as well. Okay. What are you... It's my base! Bad! Okay, well, he's rallying SCVs in. And he is expanding as well. Okay, so we know he's expanding. The, the Hellion cleans that up. Let's leave those Marines there. <laughs> Stay focused. Don't get distracted by your opponent's mistakes. Sometimes your opponent make mistakes that are so big it can distract you. SCVs and mules, build Marines, build 
uh, tanks and vikings, which these aren't hotkeyed, guys. So let's hotkey those. I didn't get to hotkey those because of the chaos. So build a tank and a viking. Gary's going to keep building depots on his own. And we're going to try and build our four barracks. Now, in this game, the add-ons are too slow, guys. So we're just going to go one, two, three, four. And we're just going to go old school. Why? Because we've got money for the barracks. We can't not build them. The add-ons will not be ready in time. So we're going to go the previous version of the build, adapting to the heavy pressure that's happening here, okay? More SCVs and mules here. More marines. Build another tank, because why not? Uh, build a reactor. Send the Viking across the map. Tank can just siege up there. Kind of covers both sides. Control click the barracks, shift onto the hotkey. Oh, I forgot to build a depot at the end of that macro cycle, so let's do that. And now that I've started all of these, he gets a friend. Bruce joins Gary over there. And that's it. All right, guys, another macro cycle. Lots of SCVs, a few Marines, a tank. That's it. Okay. And we're going to remember, just like we did in the gold in Silver League, we want two tech labs, two reactors. So two tech labs, two reactors. There we go. Let's get the double gas. And let's also get the engineering bay. So shift click the engineering bay back. All right, guys, I said I would scout and then I'd also land the Viking. So we scouted. Doesn't look like there's too much production. And we forced a bit of a reaction. Another macro cycle. We're already at 43, so these will be our last SCVs. Build Marauders and Marines. Tank. And Medivacs. We'd also start two more depots. In Chaos, it's really important to stick towards the macro cycle. Everything's a bit different to normal, but now I've finished the macro cycle, I can go stim shields. If I was gas starved, I would have skipped the tank and medevac production, right? Because we want to prioritize these. Get plus one upgrade. And oh, put guys on gas. All right, so we did all those other actions. Time for the next macro cycle. Drop mules. I don't have any energy. Build marauder, marauder. Marine, 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 marine. Build tank, which I don't have money for right now. So just going to queue up that tank in a moment. And then we're just going to go straight for depots. We're skipping medevacs because I don't have enough money for them right now in this cycle. Okay. All right, guys. So I'm going to leave those marines, I think, on the high ground. Or maybe we can just leave a tank in case those reapers come back. What do you think? I don't think we need to leave anything, actually. I think we killed most of the reapers. They're probably back at home at this point. If you're worried, you could leave something. But we've got a rally point. We'll just leave my rally point in my main. And the new units popping out will always be ready to defend. Build more tank, bio, build more depots. Oh, looks like not more tank and medevacs didn't actually queue up then, guys. So let's go back and fix that. Build a tank, build medevacs. I didn't have the money for it. So there we go. Tank and two medevacs. All right, guys. Looks like our upgrades are almost there. 30 seconds away, 10 seconds away. We can queue concussive. Queue up a few more depots. And notice we always build these depots in a nice tight grid so they don't end up crisscrossing through our whole base. All right, box these guys, shift two, and let's move across the map. Now this should be an easy win because our opponent committed a crazy amount and didn't actually deal crazy damage. Now, luckily I was watching my mini map there um, and we're able to see him coming in for this big drop. So we're gonna have to A move up there to defend the main. Box those guys, shift two, A move. Now we could also fight with the workers if we want and then shift click on the minerals. So when they're done fighting, the workers will automatically go back to mining. All right, let's move three quarters of the way across the map, guys. If we want to rebuild those workers, you select your command centers, rally back to the main, and just build a few workers. No worries. And notice I only A-move the mineral SCVs, so I don't need to replace the ones on gas. Just trying to make my life easier in the follow-up. I could have just ran the workers away or not fought with them at all, because it wasn't actually a high priority. But just trying to do things the way we do them. All right, guys. So I didn't scout ahead, which is a little lazy, right? I didn't do any deselecting. So let's do that now. Shift-click. Right, click deselect, and then pull these guys here. Remake control group. More marauders, lots more marines. Build a tank. And we want vikings, right? So we've already got a few medevacs, and vikings are big for TVT. Uh, a cute tip that Twitch Chats pointed out, guys. If you struggle with 3 Rex Reaper on this map, or if you realize it's coming, you can actually put any 3x3 building here, like an engineering bay or a barracks, and reapers now can't jump up and down the cliff. So that's a really cute thing. You don't even need to finish building it, and they can't jump up and down. Good point, Twitch chat. All right, guys. So what are we doing? We're moving forward. Let's control click the tanks. Move them up. They're going to siege there. 
We're going to move a medevac forward. He's coming for me, so we're going to stim A move now. Uh, notice our units are derping through a choke point, so we want to run away. That's a very... There was some very advanced micro I was tend tempted to do there, but uh, I just... I managed to restrain myself. What I would have done was hold position, my bio. I would have right-clicked to the right and held position. I'll talk about it again at the end of the game. For now, all right, we're moving in, guys. We're scanning ahead. Move a medevac. More marauders, more marines, tank, and more vikings. Grab these guys. Shift two, move forward. Oh, check it out. You see, he's got vikings. All right, so we're just going to pull my mobile army back a little bit. Keep scanning ahead. Notice, he doesn't have vision right now. So what I could do is I can keep scanning. He's got a scan, so I can't really do it right now. But as long as we keep scanning, he can't move in either. And we've got him kind of pinned back. Oh, he's trying to drop on me, guys. So we're going to stim and A move forward here. We're just going to let our bio Viking just do what they can do. Uh, looks like he has more Vikings than me, so maybe not the best call. Let's pull back. Nice little tank positioning. They're in like a bit of an arc, guys, which is making things very hard for me. More Marauders, more Marines, more Tanks, more Vikings. So this is a point where you're going to be really tempted to shove your units in. Um, try to think of this as you've walked into a, a bathroom stall, right? Uh, I'm, I'm assuming you're a man in this scenario. You could be a lady, but just try to imagine you have a, you know, you have a peanut, basically. You see a hole in the wall of that bathroom stall. And there is a sign written in fucking marker next to it that says, Stick it in and find out. Um... As a TVT player, you are going to be tempted to unzip and stick your thing in it. Don't do it. Don't do not do that. Just chill. I, if I want, if this situation is too stressful, you know what? Just move back. If this is too stressful, just keep building Vikings. Make sure I queue up lots of Vikings. Just siege a little further back. He's on two base. I'm not. What can we do, guys? Well, we can always box the workers. Box a bunch of the workers. Click there. Make a third. Go to a fourth. We can make extra bases, but we don't need to. We can also go Doom Drop the main as well, right? That's another thing we can do. So many different moves that we can make. But there's no pressure on us to make them. Look, he's just gonna he's gonna let me kill a command center. How nice of him. We just grab these guys, move around here, and they're just gonna kill a command center. Easy. Let's add this to hotkey. Do that. Build a tank, build a Viking. Box these guys. Shift two. A move to the front. And we can also build a liberator as well if we feel we've got enough of all this stuff. Uh oh, so that's very bad for us guys. So you want to stim and A move on the libs. And if you can click on the libs with the marines and then run back once the libs are dead. Oh, we didn't kill it. We didn't kill it. Okay. <laughs> we barely killed the libs there. But it looks like we killed the command center over that side. Now at this point, it can be really helpful if you take all of your Vikings. So if you tab through your screens, just using tab, find the Vikings, control click. And we're going to go control three. Um, stealing those onto control group three. So now those Liberators are never going to cause me problems again. And he's only got so many scans, so we can start marching our Siege Tanks forward. And remember the 3 verse one rule that we talked about in our previous episodes. So if you really want to push through, you want to find a position where there's only one tank. You take three tanks, because they one-shot a Siege Tank. And you come over here, and you Siege in range of it. And even if he has vision, he's not going to kill your Siege Tanks, and then you're going to one-shot him. And look, now we have enough Vikings to win the air fight. They can always give us vision as long as we don't let them walk in front of Marines. So the three verse one rule is one of the best things you can always think about. If you have three or more siege tanks and you're moving in, you can just take two siege tanks from their tank and that's fine. We can now move over here. Try to get a little bit more control. Oh, look, another siege tank. And we've also now got ramp control, which is amazing. Okay. Now, what else can we do? Another fancy maneuver, which you guys should never do, is marine bombs. So what do you do? You pick up a drop, and you tell it to drop on the siege tank. Just unload on the siege tank. You should not do this. Don't do this. Why? It's too fancy. Occasionally it works, like in this scenario, but if there's any anti-air around, it doesn't work at all. Now, if you want, you could pick back up, try and drop on that one. And you can see it's very effective. It's just unnecessarily fancy. Pull the Vikings back. I didn't have my Vikings on hold position, guys. Hold position with those Vikings. I normally don't use hold position much because I'm much faster than you guys are. So I don't need to. I just monitor my units. But if you're slower, make sure you use hold position to make sure your units don't move into any bad spots. Now he's only got one tank. Now we stim and A move, okay? And unsiege these tanks. Move them forward. 
and we can try to siege up here where we've got control. GG's. Cool. Now obviously we've got a third up mining so you can just transfer the workers there. As long as I'm still building lots of units and we can also build liberators if we really want. But mostly just keep building marauders, marines, tanks and as long as you position correctly you'll do it. So it's so easy to just have your brain fart in that sort of situation and just be like, Wah! what do I do? But if you're like, oh, there's only one tank there. Even if you move in range without the Viking spotting, you just siege your three tanks. You'll take two shots, which will almost kill one of your tanks. And then you'll one shot their siege tank with your, your three shot volley. Uh, first attack was actually very interesting. Because remember with this first attack, my units tried to squeeze through this choke point like absolute morons. Now what I found really interesting about this is I thought they would just fight the Liberators. All I did was A-move here. Right? Did I? Ah, I've A-clicked on the ground, guys. And yet my Marines don't consider the Liberators a threat. So they get hit by a tank and they go, we need to go fight the tank. You know what's insane about this, guys? <laughs> the Liberators are a unit that shoots ground. But because they aren't finished sieging, they're still in the middle of animating, the marines are like, you're not a threat. So the marines actually aren't going to focus them unless I right click on them. And the problem is, if I right click on those liberators with my whole army selected, that means my marauders that don't shoot up are just like, are you giving me an order to run underneath that air unit? Because that's literally the order I'm getting, right? <laughs> um, so... Ideally, I could control click my marines and then click them, or I could just box a section of units and shift click them, or I could just hold position my units. The marines will kill the libs pretty quickly, and then I can go back to A moving. Problem, I don't want to keep A moving because my units are all going to funnel into this choke of death over here. Look at that. Oh! I think I did end up hold positioning there. I'm pretty sure I did. I, 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 try, I slowed down doing it. I let my guys funnel a little bit because I'm obviously trying to play at a, a slower level and a, you know, explain things and stuff rather than just let my instincts take over because I can't really explain what I'm doing if I instinctively play, right? I'll be doing things way too fast. Just it's, things happen without any conscious thought. Yeah, I think I held position there. I'm pretty sure I held position or either targeted them manually to kill those libs and then I just pulled back. But um, it's kind of funny how if you leave tiny openings, the enemy units tend to all try to force their way through there like dumbasses. So it can actually be really nice like against Zerg sometimes or Protoss to leave like tiny openings and all the Zealots or Zerglings will funnel into that one point. Um, but yeah, remember once you've got the contain, the pressure's on them. You can always take a third command center just to prolong your income. And uh, you can also just march forward and, you know, take those fights as nicely as you want. If you want, you can do the fancy marine bombs, but most importantly, just keep building Vikings. We don't rally to the front because we're worried about drops hitting us. We just grab our units periodically and we use scans to try to maintain position. You got to think about this from your opponent's point of view. They're so screwed here, man. They're like, oh God, how do I ever get out of here? You know, they, they feel desperate. Look at this. They're trying to run forward and drop. They're walking tanks into their death. Things are getting, you know, really, really nasty. And he had a Viking advantage, so we couldn't push in just yet, but yeah. How do you break the contain? Well, my opponent's dead. My opponent has less army than me. They have less upgrades than me. I have an extra armor upgrade. They have less army. So, I mean, it's like, how do you win when you're in inferior position with less units? Well, you don't. My opponent died because, remember, they're behind, they're behind before this happened. Look at the supply at this stage of the game. They're already down 30 supply. So how do you break out of a contain? It's like, well, don't be infinitely behind. In general, how would you break out? He could do the same things I have. He can siege three tanks. If I have one tank over here and all my tanks there, he can move three tanks forward, siege them there, one shot my tank. He can get the Viking advantage, win the Viking fight, and then eventually I'm gonna run out of scans, right? And he can also use liberators to push me back slowly. The trick with the Liberators is don't siege them so far in front of your tanks. He always sieged his Liberators a bit too far away from the tanks, so they weren't covered as much as they could have been. Pick up your bio that's not very useful in a choke point in a tank war. Load it into medevacs, fly around the edge of the map and try to hit their base with a drop. Uh, especially if you catch them right after the armies moved across the map, the new army of reinforcements, that can be big. 
But generally speaking, most of the time, we always get the question, how do you break a tank bush? How do you break a tank contain? How do you deal with tanks? And without fail, what we see when we open those replays and actually give advice to the players is don't fuck up the first eight minutes of the game because usually they're way behind and they've already screwed things up. Yeah. With Zerg, it seems impossible to break. If you've let them siege here as Zerg, you've massively messed up. As a Zerg, it's so easy to just not let them get there because you've got creep spread. You've got great units that jump on top of them. So all you need to do is have a good early game, have good macro. And then when you see them move out with a tank army, go out and meet them either on the edge of creep or even a bit further forward in the middle of the map. Don't let them take a fantastic, amazing position. All right, guys, let's go. We got ourselves a TVP. I think this is a 26 or 2700 MMR Protoss player. And we're going to keep trying to just make sure we get used to Gary doing his thing. I definitely want to introduce a few more multitasking um, kind of things and like micro the Viking a little bit and stuff like that. So we are going to try to get a little bit more. Ian, thank you so much for the 10 gifted subs. Everyone slap your bacon down in chat. Holy crap. That's how we say thank you. Uh, technically, you could milk your udders, but since I'm no longer a cow, we slap our bacon instead. And there's a probe, guys, so always just attack that probe. And we've got two control groups. This is our main army. This is our secondary army. I know that sounds kind of funny, calling SCVs army, but it just means if this SCV ends up on the map, I see a lot of gold players go, oh, where's that SCV? And they're like, they're dragging around the map, and then they're boxing the SCV, and then they're telling it to go back to mining. For me, I can just at any point select that SCV and tell it to go wherever I want, right? I can double tap it to see where it is. I can double tap this SCV, that SCV. You guys have got to start getting used to this sooner rather than later. If you don't start getting used to it, you're going to have trouble multitasking. You're going to be a very slow player. Second base, third base, fourth base, and fifth base. Oh! Oh my god! A gigantic font from Dizzle comes in. And we're going to send this SCV home. Where did this guy go? Oh, there we go. Sorry, guys. Very distracted by Twitch chat being very supportive right now. Thank you so much for the love, guys! More bacon in the chat! Thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate it. All right, guys, here we go. Build SCVs, drop mules, and we've got the natural there. Shift seven, double tap, add to hotkey, and let's build marines. Okay, we don't need to chase this probe anymore. Let's just go back to mining, and we did scout a nexus already, so this guy's coming home. No worries. Can you piss off, mate? All right, we'll rally these marines down here. We should be okay. Build two SCVs, since we're having a bit of a hectic opening right now. Let's go factory there. And let's bring those two SCVs home, shall we? You go there, you go there. Use my hotkeys. I went two right click, three right click. And we can actually use this one to build the bunker. All right. Second gas is on the way. Make sure SCVs are still building, guys. Queue up another one even just to be sure because this opening's, like I said, being a bit messy. We're a bit distracted. You want to queue up more units at once because you know you're going to have to be, you know, occupied elsewhere for a bit longer. So what I can do, hot tip, guys. Right click and then press return cargo, whatever that hotkey is. And your guy will return the cargo and then continue mining. I'll do it again here with a guy that has minerals in his hand. So right click, return cargo. And notice he returns the cargo and then goes back to gas mining. Let's make orbital. Let's make some more SCVs and mules. Build marines, build a tech lab. And where is that starport? We don't have the money just yet, but that's okay. We'll come back in a second. And I should be using that camera location. I'm not doing it. I'm doing kind of things in it. It's funny when I slow down and I start just doing things less efficiently. I was like, I was like moving around like this. It's like, come on, man, use the camera locations. <laughs> More SCVs and mules drop down. Let's put everything else on top of the ramp in case some trouble starts. Let's add the starport to the hotkey. Build a CG tanky. And it's time for Gary to start up, isn't it? So Gary's starting a little later. But that's okay. If we get a slight supply block, it's better than making sure we build too many depots. Build a few more SCVs, a couple more Marines. I want to get that Viking started right away. Okay. Let's make sure we queue up another SCV right away. And if you do feel you're too supply block, guys, you can build a depot, but just put him back to mine. So that's not actually... So this is Gary. This is not Bruce. Bruce will join later. Keep that in mind. It just keeps things simpler for yourself. So that we don't get tangled up. Build a few more SCVs, a mule, two more marines, and let's get ready for our add-on swaps, guys. So we can lift this, and then we want to build a reactor, and then we want to build another reactor. So we're already tapping it, and there we go. 
Viking is going to fly through the base. And then we're going to shift click that to land. We're also going to go control three. Okay. We're also going to get these Marines. Put those on control two. Let's do it. All right, guys. Uh, Gary's going to go up into the main base after that. A few more SCVs, drop some mules, and it's barracks time, isn't it? So let's box some SCVs. Now, we realized the reason the barracks didn't build in that earlier game is because I didn't have the money. This time I made sure I had 600 minerals. Control click, shift five, and let's go build a reactor and the factory. Just blocked by the star fort for a second. Go build a tech lab. All right, guys, a few more SCVs and mules, a few more Marines. Gary's going to build a depot, and because we've started the other ones, Bruce is now going to join him. We're going to build two gases, and then we're going to select a different worker. Hot damn, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't know what I'm saying, by the way. If you guys are ever wondering what is Pig saying when he says, Dizzle my fizzly whizzlies, uh, I don't know either. It's fine. If you guys understand me, you may want to seek help, uh, because I'm pretty sure nothing I say makes sense. Notice I haven't been swapping that barracks back over, guys. I think that's actually fine. I think we might stick to this as the standard. As I'm doing it, I'm realizing I think there's a bit much for a gold player to do, so I think why bother swapping that over? I think Stim's still always going to be ready in time if we do it this way. There we go. All right, guys, no more SCVs required, just mules. Marauders, lots of marines, tanks, medevacs, depots. Nice macro cycle, just like that. All right, guys, let's get plus one weapons. My man. My man. All right, looking good, guys. Now, remember there was an observer in an earlier game perving on me, so I'm going to build a turret here. I think that's a good thing to do against Protoss because there's, there's a very high chance they have an observer sitting somewhere here or here or something like that. You can always just drop a scan as well, but turret's a little bit cheaper. Okay, more marauders, more marines, more tank, more medevacs. And of course, we're actually getting close to supply block, guys. That production is insane at this point. So I'll immediately queue up two more depots here just to make sure there's zero downtime on that. Okay. And we're looking really good. Let's make sure we control click the tech labs and press concussive. It'll automatically queue up concussive on the upgrade that has less time left to finish. All right? Because it's like got the more free queue essentially, right? Box these guys, shift two. Let's unsiege the tank. We're kind of getting ready to move out right now. More marauders, marines, marines. We'll build another tank. And then if we can build a medevac, that'd be great. But of course, we don't have much money, so we're kind of just tapping it, waiting we're for the money to tip in. You don't want to stare at things tapping when you've got other stuff to do. But this is a point where our build's basically over. We just don't have much else to do, right? We're not moving workers around. All we're doing is building units and depots. Got two more depots just to be safe. And oh my god, okay, let's stim and A move. And let's try to be very careful here, guys. Pull the bio back. I want to control click the tanks and siege them. We don't want to headbutt our marines into that. So notice we're just sitting there. If there was a lot of zealots running forward, I could have stimmed an A move, but Colossus died to siege tanks, but they roast marines. Oh, he's coming again. Let's stim an A move, guys, down the ramp. Uh-oh. All right. Hopefully I have enough. The hell? When did I attack my own depot there? Was my bio all attacking my own depot? Now, because there's no support, we can chase those Colossus down, guys. Just keep stimming and scanning. And notice we're just A-moving, but ideally I would have moved forward and target fired. Now we killed the Colossus, we can pull back. This was a really good attack. Caught me just as I was about to move out. Let's grab the tanks, unsiege, bring to the front. Build marauders, build marines, build tanks. I've got a lot of medevacs, and we know it's Colossus. I assume he's going to rebuild Colossus, so I can build a few Vikings as well. Since I already killed them, I might not need to, but yeah. All right, let's rebuild some of these depots. Though actually, I've got plenty of supply free, so that's not really a priority. Let's just set the rally point down here. Box these guys. Let's move across that map. We should be able to win, I think, now, guys. So let's go take a look. I'm too good at pretending to be gold, guys. I'm getting better and better at pretending to be a gold league player the more I do bronze to GM. If we want, we can start a third base behind this. But we don't really need to. Box a few more units. Shift two. Box shift two. Box shift two. You don't need to do that. I just figure why not. Let's scan here. 
So he's got a bunch of Stalkers and a Colossus, guys. Not a very good army. Or does he have a base? Whoa, this guy has four bases? Okay, guys, let's move those tanks forward right up into this little area. Oh, that's a very big army. I'm going to rally across the map, guys, because I feel I'm going to need all the reinforcements I can get. Lots of Marauders, lots of Marines. Build a tank. And then a Viking. Well, I don't have the money for the Viking, so whatever. Just bring these guys across, shift two. Let's put those Vikings on number two, so they can be out front kind of scouting and giving vision. Let's move the tank forward, and let's pre-spread our army a little bit, so we don't die to the Colossus, okay? We can't take too long, though. Stim, and we're going to A-move, because there's actually not that many Colossus. We have to fight off the Zealots. Once the Zealots are gone, you pull back. Now, here's an advanced move. If you can... Oh, he's coming for us. Okay, I think we can fight this, guys. We're going to try and stim a move, but if he runs back, we run back. All right? Every single time, that's what we do. If he stims... If he pulls back, we pull back. If he comes forward, we go forward. All right? If there was more Colossus, more Storm, we'd probably just try to pre-spread a little bit more. But if there's a lot of Zealots, you need to run forward to kill them before they kill your tanks. Because if your tanks die, he can kind of cause you a lot of trouble. So we're going to stim these guys off in that direction. And then these guys are all going to stim an A-move as well, okay? Now at this point, there's not much meat left, so if you can click on the Colossus, that's going to be the best move you can do. Notice the Marines all got melted, but the Marauders did very well. Let's build more Marauders, more Marines, more tanks, and more Medivacs. Because Why was I doing that? Because I don't have much units left, right? So I really needed to build more tanks, build more Medivacs. And looks like I have a few units just behind this as well. So I would keep putting that siege tank there. This guy played really well. He did a good attack, expanded behind it, macroed forward like a beast. This was actually a very scary, scary game. I don't know how he had four bases up. Are they just not saturated or what? 79 workers? What? This, this player is a madman. How do you dump excess gases, Terran, says the sack. Don't worry about it. It's very unimportant. There is no... There's no amazing gas bank dump. Protoss has the best gas gas dump in Archons. But, uh, yeah, this is 68 probes. Wow. All right. I did, I did attack my own depot, by the way, like, from the start of the fight, right? So this was kind of unfortunate, guys, because I don't have marine spotters. This is a lot scarier than it needed to be. This game would have been much easier if I'd put marine spotters out. If I saw this army coming, my tanks would be sieged on the low ground, and moving up this ramp would be a disaster. So here we go. I A-move for this first fight, but notice I didn't immediately siege the tanks. Do you guys know why? Because they would have blocked the ramp. Now, I still could have just sieged them. It's just then my tanks would have had to start sieging up here, because they wouldn't be able to move down the ramp without unseaging the tanks on it. By pulling part of my bio back, I let just a few tanks and a few bio fight at a time, and it worked out pretty well. Now, when do I A-move this depot? Oh, it's just there. It's at that point. It's as he turns around, I A-move the depot. Thankfully, thankfully it wasn't too early, and then the tank still kills it, right? Because I don't unsiege it in time, I don't think. Ow! Ow! But we killed all the Colossus, which was huge. If he kept those Colossus alive, then that would have been a much harder game for me. Um, opponent only had six gateways, but if he built... If he stayed on three base right now and just did nothing but made Zealots and Colossus, this would have been a very hard game for me. But notice the opponent has a crazy amount of money. If they made a Templar Archives and like eight more gateways right now, went to 14 gates, if they're just warping in Zealots, Chronoing Colossi, and then adding in some Archons, they'd be great. But my opponent here is going for a fourth base and starts building like shield batteries and probing, making upgrades, which aren't the worst thing in the world, but none of these things are important right now. Spending their bank is important. They start transferring probes from their main to their fourth because the priority for them has to be defending the two base all in that's incoming. And being on three base economy is already more than enough. So thinking about upgrades and fourth bases, these are things, if I'm on four bases as well, you need to do these things. If I'm on three or four bases, because I'm on two bases, it's kind of the wrong focus. And uh, yeah, if Rabbit did that and built just Zealots, they don't need Stalkers. Stalkers are really shit units. A few Stalkers to shoot up is okay, but you don't want many of them. They're very bad against tanks as well. 
um, then it would be a very different game. Because imagine that's enough money to make six Archons. That's enough money to make 18 Zealots. Imagine six Archons and 18 Zealots does to my army. I would be absolutely dead. And that's because that fight was so bad for me. It was, it was an awkward fight positionally because I didn't have spotters out. So this is a classic game where I should have just found a moment, maybe at six minutes, maybe at five minutes, to just send a few Marines around the map. By the way, shout out to my opponent. There was an observer there, but it was a little bit further back. So the turret doesn't quite reveal it. It sees the turret, the turret doesn't see it. Unfortunate, unfortunate. Well done. Hard to pick up something you got rusty at. Used to be pretty good at guitar. It's hard to pick back up. It'll come back so quickly, Blokey King. <clears throat> you just have to uh, lower your expectations initially, right? Just remember there'll be like a week, uh, a, a good, say, say a good eight hours of rust. And also, I guess with guitar, you've also got to condition your fingers or whatever as well and like your hands just to get used to the movements a little bit. So if it's been a really long time, like decades, might take like a few long sessions, but there'll be a point where it comes back and it just clicks suddenly again and then you, you do it. But you just got to not expect to be able to play properly until you've put in that time and work and, and then you'll get there really quickly. It's it, Once you lower your expectations, it happens surprisingly fast. It's just when you go into it, your expectations are unreasonable and so it feels like you're not getting better and you're absolutely hopeless. It's so funny how, how your mind frames a situation massively changes your experience of it being long or short. It's that subjectivity where your expectation totally colors the reality. All right, guys, let's go. We're going to do barracks and gas. Let's go. All right, let's send a scout across the map. Hide that behind the natural. Put that on control group two. Have we got our camera location? Second, third, fourth, and fifth over there. Probably want to put the fifth in the middle on this map is a bit better. Not that I'm going to take it. A little slow to put on gas there this game. Just centering those camera locations. It is what it is. We'll queue up one more SCV to get to 19. And we'll see what happens. Let's go build the command center. Having some good philosophical discussions after that last game and talking about picking up instruments or games after many years not playing and uh, and all that sort of stuff. And it's, it's fascinating how just being patient, not expecting too much of yourself and then just slowly working at the skills, you'll improve so fast. Whereas if you expect to instantly be as good as you were before and you're like, I need to get there, it ta it feels very painful and difficult. And you're very unreasonable with yourself. I, I always actually say that I have some of my best days on the ladder my very first day back from a tournament when I've been away commentating for a week. Haven't, pl haven't played the game sometimes for two or three weeks at a time. And I get back and I play and win every single game. Like literally, I came back just a, a week ago after being away for a week and a half. I won, I think nine out of 10 games. Um, which I never win that much. So why did that happen? Well, very simple. That happened because I said, I'm really rusty. I'm going to play like shit. I have no expectations. I expect to lose every single game today. And I'm just going to kind of go with the flow and just try and get used to the basics again and just do my thing. And I play calmer and slower and more methodically than I ever normally do. And it's crazy because I'm like, man, if only I could be this slow and calm and relaxed in my play normally, I'd be such a better Starcraft player. And there's obviously a lesson to be learned there about uh, having reasonable expectations, which is something which uh, is easier said than done, but definitely something you can try to mentally prepare yourself if you're hopping back into Starcraft after a big break and basically to say to yourself, Take a deep breath, expect my- if I was Masters before, expect myself to be Platinum now and for it to take a good bunch of sessions to get anywhere close to where I used to be. Alright guys, we build SCV's mules, two more marines, a tank, and you guys know what happens. g g g, -g gary Gary! Alright, Gary's gonna start a depot nice and early this time. It's gonna be a little bit better. Let's build a Viking as well. Now, people were saying, can you build a Liberator? We're actually going to build a Liberator as time goes on. For now, though, <clears throat> let's build a Viking, rally it over to that Overlord. Build a few more SCVs. A few
few more marines. <clears throat> and of course the extra depot. Just doing these nice clean macro cycles, guys. Really nicely done. Right, we don't need the marine down there. And we can put this tank on the high ground. All right, guys. So we want to build, lift the factory off. And remember, we want to do both at once. So we don't need to build the reactor just yet. SCVs, mules, marines, depot. And now we can go build a reactor, build a reactor. We want to do them at the same time so that we don't forget. Always do things at the same time, guys. Batch those bad boys up. So the Viking, we're also going to check the pillar at the front. And then we're going to go and scout our opponent's bases, just to see what's going on. Build some SCVs, drop some mules, build marines, and oh, looks like it's time to build those barracks, guys. One, two, three, and four. There we go. All right, build a few more SCVs, a few more marines, and a depot. We can lower that depot there as well, those two. Let's go double gas, engineering bay. Control click the barracks, shift five. Build a tech lab. Put that there and build a reactor. All right, guys, looks like we see a third base, a couple roaches. There's some drones popping out. If they're building drones, it means they're not all inning us. Because if they're just building nothing but army, maybe they could be aggressive. Likewise, if we actually looked at the saturation on third, you can say, oh, he's droning his third base. Therefore, he's doing economy stuff. Not the most important thing, but we'll introduce a lot more scouting in Gold Part 2 and uh, in the weeks afterwards in Platinum. All right, guys, so let's lift those two barracks, put them there, build the tech lab. SCV count. We can just build two more SCVs, drop some mules, build Marauder, build a bunch of Marines, build a tank. And depots. Where's Gary and Bruce? Oh, they went back to work. All right, Gary and Bruce. I'm going to send them a third friend to build an extra depot because we're already supply blocked. That's all right. Stim shields. Plus one. And drop mules. No more SCVs. Marauder, 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 Marauder. Lots and lots of marines. You can see they're trying to queue up at least four marines on each of those barracks. And then we want tanks and, of course, medevacs. Build a few more depots here. Make sure we don't get supply blocked anymore. We skipped the medevacs because they didn't have the money. So now I'm going to select it and build those medevacs. Now, if you keep this Viking alive, we can just put this out here and it'll see if there's an army coming across the middle of the map. So that's a really useful scout. We can also box these guys. Rally to the front, and we can go just do some deselecting of the marines across the map. Control 2. <clears throat> Let's build some more depots. We are very close to being supply block constantly, so we'll queue up extra. Uh, we don't need any more mules, we're just saving them, guys. More marauders, more marines, extra tank. We don't have the money for it, so we're just going to queue the tank when we get the money. And then two medevacs. Now, what have we forgotten, guys? Let's double check our upgrades. We've got plus one on the way. We've got stim and shield. Let's get concussive. We're doing pretty good. And we're almost ready to move out. Unfortunately, because I was supply blocked, I only have two siege tanks, now three. But we will have a fourth one in the near future. So we can move out soon and then bring more tanks with the reinforcement. Queue up a few more depots, a few more marauders, lots and lots of marines. And let's unload that. Let's box this army. Shift box, control two. Let's move forward. We're going to try and march forward, siege some tank, maybe a tank there, tank and tanks there, and kind of work our way forwards in between the bases. But if we can have a tank there, that can be really nice for reaching across, I think. All right. Lots of marauders, lots and lots of marines here. And we'll try and build a tank as well. Notice I've got vision ahead of my army, so I'm not too paranoid. We've got plenty of time to react if he, if he comes out. All right, let's move forward. And what we can do is we can try to get these tanks. And we can just kind of siege them there for now. Spread our guys out. We saw roaches, so we probably don't need to spread out too much. But what we can do is we can just grab a handful of bio, stim in. Try to bait them into a bad fight. Where's the drones? Interesting. Interesting. What is this? Ah, oh, they're trying to hide the economy over there. Okay. So these guys are just going to go. They're going to kill that base. And we can just run them over here. 
Lots of marauders, lots of marines, tanks, medevacs. As well as some more depots. Remember, control click and lower those to make sure you guys don't get trapped. And let's grab another army. Shift 2. Alright, let's move these guys forward, guys. We're taking a bit too long here. We don't want to give our opponent time to pull anything too tricky out. Let's move these tanks forward. Move that there, that there. We can just kind of keep these guys spread in a big arc. So if the roaches run out, we just F2A move. And we'll do... Oh, hello. Hello. Well, this game just got interesting. So what we're going to do, guys, we're going to select our army. We're going to stim A move the front. Back at home, we're going to try and defend the natural, not the main, okay? So grab the SCVs, go there. We're going to siege that tank. Keep building lots of marauders, lots of marines. And then we can raise those depots if he tries to run down there. But we've got SCVs, we can just box stim A move to defend, okay? Meanwhile, these guys are going to go in. Or we're just going to move up that ramp so they're not stuck behind each other, and then A move, okay? And look at that. So, as awkward as this is, we are going to lose the main. Let's lift that off. I guess we can lift these barracks off as well. Can't hold down the cancel button to queue to cancel everything. And then we can just lift those off so they don't die. Okay. If he comes down, then we will stim an A move. But otherwise, just going to wait until the rest of the army gets home, okay? And that might be the last building there. Indeed it is. Notice it says has not rebuilt their base and is being revealed. And we can see that and select it even through Fog of War. So that's going to be GG when we kill that extractor. Alright, nicely done guys. Cool. Funky play from the Zerg. I love the mass drop. Mass drop is so much fun. Booyah says the tanks were actually useless in the base trade. We could have brought them home and let the bio do its job while the tanks defend. Very good point. Siege units in general in a base trade, you can send home to try and help defend while the mobile units shove in. Um, and that can work out really well. All right, guys, we got ourselves another TVT. The build's feeling a little bit more fluid with those add-on swappings now. And uh, I think we definitely are changing the build to make sure that we're going to be uh, just kind of swap building the barracks onto the tech lab just to make it easy. I think the first couple of times where I was swapping off the reactor was just unnecessarily complicated. So we're going to stick with this way of doing it. I'll change it in the build order notes as well. And uh, if you guys who are watching live can remind me, I'll try to update the... Uh, I'll try to edit it in the video as well. Some notes saying, hey, if you want to, you know, follow this, skip along, like, to the later games. Like, notice that we're actually not going to do the, uh, the reactor swap off. is not required. So hopefully not too many people get tangled up doing the first execution I did in the first couple games and then have to relearn it. I apologize, guys. It is my bad. There's always a bit of a learning process as I play these games at this spe speed and realizing kind of what's viable, what's a little bit too hard. Notice we did the fancy rally onto gas there. Oh my. All right, one more SCV. Uh, we forgot to SCV scout. That's all right, it's not too late. Go behind the natural. It's a TVT here versus a 2400 Terran, guys. So this one should be a little bit less sweaty than those 3k MMR game opponents that we've had a few of. But uh, definitely something where we can't be relaxing. We've still got to kind of play the game properly. Let's go reactor. Second camera location. Oh, we accidentally pulled the uh, scout home. My bad. Hopefully don't lose that. There we go. Build the command center. Make sure all my camera locations are set up. Third base, fourth base, fifth base. There we go. Build the depot. And looks pretty good. Besides the late scout, technically if a reaper comes out, it could stop me from scouting here. So let's just go hide behind the expansion straight away. And hopefully we can see what's up. Build another SCV, build a few more marines. And oh look, command center, same as mine. So it's a 1rex expand. We can just go home with this SCV, no worries. Nothing too crazy. And you know what? It's time to build the factory, but I've got an SCV here, so I might as well just use that guy to do it. This main base, lots of space to build buildings, so nice and easy choosing where to build those buildings. We'll get that second gas. Uh, we can even rally here because there's no one on that mineral patch. Just helps optimize the mining a little bit. And uh, we can build a bunker there. Okay. Keep building marines and SCVs. 
And we can grab these two, chuck them on gas. And remember, orbital. The moment that command center is finished, if you're waiting to do that, you're just going to be way more efficient. Now, because it's TVT, they could be Reapers. So if you want, you can rally those Marines extra over here to the edge of the cliff. And then you put these guys inside the bunker. There we go. Tech Lab plus Starport. Let's rally to the natural now. And first macro cycle, guys. Queue up four or five SCVs. Next will be some Marines. But of course, we're very starved for money at this point in the game. Four Marines should be enough to stop a Reaper jumping in, so we can go back to rallying here. Siege tank. And of course, Gary. Gary is going to get building some depots. Now, because it's, it's already 41, I'll build another depot. But then Bruce will go back to mining minerals before joining Gary in the main. So just that. A few more SCVs, a few more Marines here. Obviously, I've got to keep tapping it because I don't have the money. I want to build that Viking as well. Let's select the starport, add it to that key, build the Viking. And just rally over there. All right, we're looking really good, guys. Gary can keep building depots. We don't need to wall off because it's TVT, but I've chosen to this game, so whatever. Build a few more SCVs, a few more Marines. Siege tank on the high ground. And of course, reactor can go down here, guys. In a little bit. Or actually, we can do it right there, right? And then a reactor on the starport at the same time. So those sync up nicely. Beautiful. Let's get an extra macro cycle. Build SCVs. Build Marines. Build depots. Yeah, whatever. Alright. Grab the Viking. We're going to go for a scout of the main. And then land. And you know what, guys? I'm going to try and scout a little bit more with the Viking and pay attention to it. Because... Now we're in gold. I do want us to start paying more attention to our multitasking. So keep a few more SCVs, a few more Marines, another depot, and what's next? Barracks time, guys. Let's select a bunch of SCVs. We want to go barracks, 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 and barracks. So we'll lift off the starport, build a reactor, lift off the factory, build a tech lab. Control click the barracks, shift five, and let's go next macro cycle. Last few SCVs. Drop mules, build marines, go depot, and then go up in the main where we're going to be joined by Bruce to build two depots at a time. Let's get an engineering bay now. We've finished our macro cycle, build two gases. What did we scout in there, guys? Oh, I didn't actually look at it. I meant to micro it, but I was too busy. Looks like a pretty standard setup going for five barracks. Looks like maybe we killed a ton of SCVs there, actually. We might have just done insane damage. Wow. Do another macro cycle. No SCVs needed. No energy for mules. So just... Oh, we need to get our, our buildings set up first. Before we can do that. Because otherwise we're going to end up queuing marines on barracks that don't have add-ons yet. And we'll mess this up. Now we can go build marauders. Build marines. Build tank. Build medevacs. And build depots. Beautiful. Alright, macro cycle's done. So let's go stim. Get shields when that's done. Get plus one weapons. Put guys on gas here. You can see we're a little slow on the gas. Uh-oh. Got to put that on gas a bit faster. Few more marines, few more marauders. And look, our rally is not correct. So let's box all these guys. Control two. Lower those depots on that side. And awesome. More marines, more marauders, more tank, medevac. And of course, more depots non-stop, guys. Just getting better and better at building this macro forwards. And you're going to see, check this out, we're at two tanks. Third tank started. And that should line up pretty well. Third tank popping with these upgrades. So let's start concussive as well. And that's going to be a great time for us to move out, right? More marauders, more marines. Lots more marines, guys. Notice I've got a lot of marauders queued on the right barracks. These ones here are not... It's interesting, that says T and that says R. What does that letter stand for, guys? I have no idea what that R means. Is that that R and T? I've never noticed that before, honestly, when I have the barrack selected. Is T the default hotkey for Mar Marauder or something? I've literally never even noticed that. T and R. I don't even know. <laughs> Discovering things in the game I didn't even know were there, guys. Uh, let's queue up one more tank and then... Little deepest reactor and tech lab. Oh wow! I, I literally didn't even know that was there. I've never I've never noticed that text. So it tells you which ones have tech labs and reactors. Oh, that's very cool. Nice little thing. Have you guys ever noticed that? 
I've never looked at that in my life. Tiny little bit of white text there. Now I'm on a 4K monitor. Maybe that's why I can see it. I'm worried about Pig being our coach, says bro. What are you... Oh, come on. Come on! Come on, staring at details is for noobs. I accidentally just stimmed my whole army there. Uh-oh, you guys are making me afraid now. All right, guys, let's send some scouts out. We're done with the research. Control two. Rally to the natural. More marauders, more marines. Secure up another tank. Box these guys, shift two. Let's A move across the map. So we probably should have A moved these scouts so we could fight the enemy marines. It is what it is. Let's start plus three armor. And remember, guys, we don't need medevacs. We need Vikings. I, I manually clicked here to show you, but normally I just tab to it to build Vikings. Okay. All right. He sieged up in the natural. That's good. Let's make sure I focus on tank and Viking production while I'm moving forward. Oh. Is there a random tank out here? What is that doing? So this is the classic opponent that moves half their army away from the rest of their army, so you can just stim and A-move it. I'm sorry, Hungry for Battle, but I see a small army here. It's only a section of your units on their own. Unfortunately, a big mistake for Hungry for Battle, just leaving a lot of their units out on their own. And now they're bringing the rest over here, which I could maybe A-move as well. But that just made it kind of easy because we scanned, we saw all the tanks were in the natural, and then I was very surprised to find a tank on its own here. Then I saw a pack of marines on their own, but I knew the tanks weren't there. So that just made it very easy for me. Guys, I've got a very high repeat rate. I accidentally queued up five marauders on each. That's a thousand minerals right there. If you do that, hold down the escape key and get rid of that. It's okay to queue up the marines because they're building much quicker on reactors. And uh, build some tanks, build some vikings. All right. Shift two. Scan. Looks like... So the problem, yeah, the problem Hunger for Battle's having is they keep moving their tanks forward a little bit. If they have a base there, they don't. Just going to scan. Okay. So what we can do, guys, is we can just do the distraction drop. We're just going to steal that onto number three. And then remake our army. Control two. Just tell that to unload in the back. We're not going to micro it at all. And we're just going to keep unseaging these tanks and getting ready for our next push. We're actually going to take the Vikings, put them on number three. Put them out in front. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab our tanks, clump them up. We're just going to put them like there. All right, and we're going to start moving forward with them, okay? So there we go. We can bait the bio in as well. Oh, he's actually got a uh, tank there, but look, our Marauder runs forward, takes the shot. Okay, so we've killed some tanks. Remember the rule of three versus one, guys. So we're going to take these tanks. Click, shift, box, unsiege. These guys are going to get ready to take out that one siege tank, okay? Going to stim and A-move our whole army. Siege the tanks and then pull back. That was pretty advanced, the speed at which I did that. But I lost my Vikings to make up for it, guys. Box these guys. Shift two. Let's do that drop maneuver again so you guys get used to this, okay? Just box, guys. Alt 3, if you're not using basic control groups, tell it to unload in the main and boost. And then remake army, control 2, and move it back. And that's just going to keep my opponent really stressed out without me having to really do anything, okay? And look at this, our tanks are kicking ass now. Let's get our viking, put that on control 3. It's a shame I only have one. Keep building vikings and tanks behind this. But remember the rule of 3v1. So you can click their tank, see where the dotted line is if you're not very good at, at guesstimating. Move them in range, and we should... I think that back tank's a bit far back, but... Yeah. So even if he scanned, he'd only get one shot off, or if he had vision as well, same thing. We're not going to micro that in the back, guys, because that's too hard for where we're at skill-wise. And... Let's go build some command centers, just in case this game drags on, because it's taking a while. What we can also do is we can grab about half of this bio and we can go around the other side. So if we go down here, Nothing has he got a base there? No, but we know he's kind of down there. So I want to be able to potentially sandwich him. Like if he gets in a bad position, I want to be able to just A move everything and kill a lot of stuff, right? And you can see my bio army is bigger than his. So we can actually just stim and fight this. 
Where's it? Oh, there's a tank. I couldn't see that tank. Pull back. We don't want to chase into the other tanks. We did some good damage there. And he's got army coming. Let's make sure I'm still building lots of marines and marauders. And now build some more tanks and vikings as well. We saw a drop coming across the map there, guys. So we're just going to try and find where that is. And then we, if we have to land the vikings, that's okay. Can't find it, so I'm just going to siege these tanks up here. And that'll at least defend my third base. Back at home, he moved a tank forward. But remember the rule of 3v1. He only moved one tank in range of three. So he gets a shot or two off and then he gets one shot. Big mistake for him. Now I'm very low on scans. So let's try and add these commands in his to hotkeys. And, oh, look at this. Okay, guys, let's A move the SCVs. Stim, just A move everything. Not the best fight for me. But as long as the SCVs do some good tanking, we'll be okay. Stim again. Oh my god, get in the bunker. Get in the bunker. Okay, let's bring these guys back. Stim those guys. Try to fight with them as well. A few more marines queuing up, guys. Build another tank. Build some more vikings. I'm afraid some people will forget their macro entirely after watching what you're doing. Notice I'm doing it down here, guys. Select. Build tanks. Build vikings. Very important. We'll bring these guys to the front. I just took a crazy amount of damage, guys. So we need to control click these workers. Actually, control click the idle worker button. And put them on the third base. We also need to build mules and more SCVs for this base as well, as make some orbital command centers on these. This, be good. this is also very awkward right now, because my opponent did a very good job of building a lot of siege tanks, making it hard for me to push in. We're gonna try and move these tanks just a little bit further forward and see if we can get some good shots off. So look, he's coming forward now. We can stim the bio, but don't chase him. Stim the bio. And then run back. Don't chase into the tanks. Finally, we've got a contain, which we didn't actually get for a long time, which is why this was so hard. So go home and select command centers. Tab, orbital, orbital. If you've got all the command centers on hotkey, if you build a lot of command centers in the late game, it makes it much easier to do that, guys. Looks like he's moved a tank forward there. More Marauders, Marines, Tanks, and let's build some Liberators since they seem to have great Viking control. Control click Idle Worker. Don't send them here, guys. Remember, we've got a fourth base as well. So we can double tap, recenter fourth camera location, third base, double tap, recenter third base. And we can hold down the worker key because we're only at 30 workers right now. So we're building as many workers as we can. And we're dropping a bunch of mules. As long as my opponent's contained, we're winning this game. So what are we going to do, guys? We're going to use a dumping key. Dump Marine, check for corners. Dump Marine, check for corners. If he doesn't have corners, he's mining out. Whereas just by having this mining and continuing to make units, I should eventually win this game. I lost a lot of steam by losing all those SCVs, but that's all right. We can build Engineering Bay Armory. And look at that, cheeky bugger. Cheeky bugger. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to siege a Liberator up there, okay? And that'll deny that base on its own. These guys are going to go Shift 2, and they're going to come back here. Looks like there's a Viking fight going on. Just make sure we get these Vikings on secondary army key. Kill the Liberator. If we can find his Vikings, that'd be great. There we go. So we managed to kill a Viking. If his Marines are part of the fight, obviously we have to run away though. Now he, he did siege a Widow Mine there, guys. So pull the Vikings back, drop a scan. And you'll see the Liberator will kill everything. Now, what am I missing? Bring these tanks forward. I didn't actually scout the top left. Let's do that. Oh, I forgot to hold position the Vikings, guys. Hold position. Hold position, guys. And we can finally break their line here as well with these tanks moving forward. I have so much bio that I think we're okay. We were just trying to make sure we didn't screw up at all. And is that what I think it is? Is that another planetary? All right, we'll tell this Liberator to siege that base as well. Good job from our opponent here, just hanging on. All right, let's build some more workers here, guys. And let's try to fix up our workers a little bit. Remember, we don't have any gas mining. So let's move those guys there. Those guys there. We can try to go take two gases. Take two gases. Hold down the worker key. And then we just box a few workers. Put them on gas. Or you can do it this way. 
using that Shift D select. And do it the same here. Right click, Shift D select, right click, Shift D select. And suddenly you're back in gas income. And that's us planning ahead because we lost all of our gas miners before this, okay? Okay, so what's defending the natural now, guys? It's only two siege tanks, so we can basically just box these guys. Notice I'm not using my control groups anymore because there's lots of things in different areas. We want to be very manual in how we control things. So we're just going to move in and take out our opponent's expansion. Now, I don't want to go up the cliff, but now I've got a tank covering the ramp. I'm killing a command center. This should basically checkmate him. Keep building marauders and marines, tanks, and liberators, and we should be good. We also... If the game really drags on, we do want to start 2-2 and vehicle weapon upgrades, okay? All right. So it looks like we've basically got checkmate now. We're just going to take these tanks and uh, move them here. What you can do is you can actually send a tank. Just queue it there. In vision, but not close enough to die. Send a tank here. In vision, not close enough to get hit. They'll eventually kill those planetaries, okay? These medevacs, we don't need those. We can bring them back to the front. Bring these guys here as well. And it's all just about being methodical and never feeling like you have to jump into the meat grinder, okay? So look at that. If we unsiege the tank, it can fight. It can bring these guys over. So it looks like he kept a lot of SCVs. Maybe he flew SCVs over there. Over here as well, look at that. So we can just kill that SCV building that. Oh, oh, oops, I accidentally sieged too early. Run away, Liberator. Run away. Kill, kill it. And he, he realizes he's basically checkmated at this point. So it looks like GG well played. He's going to have to give up there. TBT is all about positioning. It's all about just setting up in those areas and saying, hey, it's your problem now. And watching your opponent panic and then run into your positions. So this took a long time to finish. It took an extra 10 minutes. But because we were methodical, it's 20 minutes rather than 45 minutes, right? Um, could I have done things better? For sure. His positioning was very weird, definitely caught me off guard, and it was like an unfamiliar pattern that I didn't exactly know how to deal with. Yeah, I'm way up in supply. Maybe I could have just stimmed the, nat stimmed the natural, but this whole setup was just absolutely bizarre. So Hungry for Battle only had one factory, but that thing must have never stopped building siege tanks. They had a very good tank count. And... <laughs> but then they just did this very weird setup over here. And that's, that's kind of the problem. I think the way Hunger for Battle should have played is if you're going to play this style with hidden bases, you probably want to play with like battle cruisers and stuff like that. I think you want to basically play mech. Because if you're going to take hidden bases, like the bio never really did anything this game for you, but you had clever, annoying tank positioning. You had good hidden sneaky bases. And this usually goes better with a player who's building mech. You're using lots of tanks, you're using like Banshees or Battle Cruisers or Hellion runbys to do damage to the opponent's economy. And you're kind of playing the way Florencio plays with like layers of sick defense everywhere. Otherwise, you want to make sure you keep your bio... Uh, if you want to play this style where you're kind of turtling, you want to make sure your bio just hides off on the edge of the map. And when the opponent tries to push you, you fly all your medevacs in, unload your bio in my main, and you win with a base, a, a, a big doom drop. And then I panic and I headbutt into your siege tank line and I, I kill my whole army while your whole army annihilates me. That's kind of what you were playing for with this like, I'm not going to take a normal third. I'm going to hide a base and I'm going to position tanks on the high ground. And that would have been really cool. But just stylistically, that kind of fits more with how you're playing here. Whereas if you are playing just a, a bio tank build like this, you know, move across, be confident, even though you know I'm a bit better than you at this stuff. Still go for it, and if you hit a good solid, you know, momentum timing, you'll actually kick some ass. Um, so, so go for it, mate. Yeah. So from here, obviously that was some very good fights, but what's weird is that he kind of moved out and took this position. Now, I could have just stimmed over, cleared this tank and bio with my superior numbers once the medevacs finish healing, sieged my tanks here, and it probably would have been a bit easier to be like, okay, you're contained, let's do this. Because I didn't really have him fully contained, I felt a bit awkward. And the reason I didn't want to attack is because that tank on the high ground scared me away from it. I didn't want to walk into what could have been two or three tanks on the high ground. I was kind of like, oh, this is a bit awkward. But splitting the drops off was huge. Remember, we've already killed a bunch of SCVs with the Viking this game. Queuing a drop in the main does a ton of damage. I don't even stim it. And it's a huge disruption for our opponent to deal with. And these tanks, 
were being insanely efficient all game as well. So I put a lot more attention into thinking about how I was going to break this weirder setup. As a result, I was much slower to take a third and fourth base behind. It's something we've been doing pretty regularly in TVT when the game stalls out a little bit. But you can see in the unit's loss tab that the trading, just by us being very patient and careful, was very uh, efficient. Now those Vikings there, getting shot down. Got to be careful, guys. Hold position those Vikings, man. Got to try and monitor those. But another drop goes in the main, and this again got a ton of damage. You know, seven SCVs, eight SCVs, some bio, a couple of depots go down. So efficient, man. So efficient. You can see in the unit's loss tab, this was very, very good for us. Cool. And then there was a lot of just, my blob is bigger than your blob, so I'm going to A move. Right? We've been doing that a lot more today. If my blob's bigger than their blob, we just attack move into it and it's good. Pig, how much damage did the Viking do? Uh, I'm gonna guess like seven workers. Let's check. Yeah, yeah, I could have pulled back the Vikings, but I was kind of playing a little bit slower to try and uh, make up for the previous bio pulling back a bit quickly. That is correct. Oh no! Hungry for battle, A move the SCVs at it. Five SCVs, not bad. Yeah. You notice that positioning is especially brutal, guys. If you ever harass a mineral line with a single unit, if you put it in between the gas and the minerals, and I could have been a bit further down, if they A move workers, they'll all funnel in one at a time. They can't get us around. Now, if he'd moved commanded past, he could have surrounded there. But in general, SCVs aren't the best at fighting landed Vikings, so not bad. We got a scout and killed five workers, super successful. And already I'm up seven workers in this game, which is massive. All right, guys, we're playing a Terran vs. Zerg. Now, I want to get a little bit more active uh, with just kind of bouncing between macro tasks and the Vikings. I am going to play a little bit faster this game to do that. Once I get to that stage with the Viking out, I'm going to hunt the whole map and scout, and I'm going to bounce between that and at home. And we're not going to talk much about what I'm scouting or what I'm looking at. We're just going to kind of be focusing more on doing things and doing it quickly and getting used to bouncing between different tasks. And right at the start, we're going to do that as well. This guy, that there, is already going to be on control group two. This guy, control group three, is going to go scout around the back. Double tap two, double tap three, double tap two, double tap three. Jump to the main base using the camera location, jump there, jump to the natural. Let's get our third base camera location, fourth base camera location, fifth base camera location. Get used to cycling through actions quickly like this. Um, so you, you want to increase your screens per minute because I, I want you all to break out of the habit of staring at a screen and slowly moving your eyes across it. You want to be able to recognize things from seeing a split frame on the screen, right? Just a fraction of a second. You see what what's there. You immediately, that's that. I do this. You don't want to be... Oh, let's bloody stare at the thing, buddy. No, get home. You see the hatchery on the minimap? I don't need to see anything else. Bring it home. Build the command center. Put on resources. Let's go. This is obviously something that starts gradual and builds over time. Build the depot. Queue it back on minerals. Try to be faster. I've been focusing on urgency a lot, and that still comes first. Oh, sorry, on organization. But urgency is also very important in StarCraft, because if you never push yourself to play faster than you're comfortable with, you end up stagnating as a player where you just can't get as much done as you need to get done. And you end up falling behind on all your basics. So cue another SCV, cue the two Marines. Let's go for the factory guys. Lower the depot. Get ready to build a starport over there after. And go for the second gas. And guess what? Double tap three. Build the bunker. Cue back to minerals. Jump to the main. Build SCVs. Build Marines. Alright, so notice we're playing a little bit faster. But this is something you've, you've got to kind of start training yourself to do sooner rather than later. And there's people who fall on opposite sides of the spectrum where I watch them play and I'm like, okay, you really need to work on your basics. Right, let's grab these Marines. That's four Marines. That should be okay. Let's just cancel the bunker, get a bit of a refund. And let's keep macroing. Four Marines beat six Zerglings, guys. We can make an orbital. Let's keep making SCVs, drop a mule, 
Obviously, I could have microed that better, but that's okay. We did good enough. Let's build the bunker again. Q back. And let's go back. Okay, we got SCVs building. Yes, we do. Do we have Marines building? Yep. Tech Lab Starport. So we're just resuming the build from where we were. Build the Starport. Rally back to mining. Let's rally to our natural now as well. Command center has been upgraded. And there we go. Build a few more SCVs. Drop mules. Build Marines. And remember, a tank's going to come out. And we also want to go straight for depots along with that siege tank. I'm going to start the depot with Gary a little bit early. And there we go. Siege tank starts up. Time for another macro cycle. Let's queue some more SCVs. Queue a few more Marines. And let's build another depot. And we'll get Bruce in there just for a single depot. Get Gary to queue up a second one. And that should be nice. Let's lower that depot. Put guys in the bunker. If you want to raise it because it's a Zerg, that's okay. But if so, I want to wait till these SCVs are inside the wall off before doing that. A few more SCVs and a mule. We want to build Marines and a Viking. We can, of course, lift off that factory and just lift that over there. We'll build the two reactors at the same time. Put the safety tank on the high ground. Build a few more SCVs. Like I said, if we want to, we can do that. But you know what? Let's send a scout out. Deselect, 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 come back, control two. Okay. Build a few more SCVs. Drop mule. Build more marines. And we accidentally rallied Gary and Bruce to the natural. That's a mistake, guys. Let's grab a new Gary and Bruce here. Have them ready to build depots in the main. But first, let's go reactor, reactor. Box only the mineral workers so we don't mess up our mining. One, two, three, and four. Cue them back. Let's do a macro cycle. SCVs, mules. Build two marines. Build two depots. That's a full macro cycle right there. Now, what do we see, guys? Our opponent does not have a third base, but a few lings just killed our marine. We can move this guy forward if we want, see if he's got a base up here. It would be pretty rare, but you never know. Control click the barracks, shift five. Let's go double gas. Build an engineering bay, click back on minerals. Time for another macro cycle. What's our worker count, guys? 45, so we don't really need more workers. Just drop mules, build marines, and swap our add-ons around. No point producing a full cycle of stuff yet. Just build these add-ons, tech lab on the factory, reactor on the starport. And we want to lift those two over and build a tech lab there. That's going to put us on five barracks. Our Viking, let's put that on our secondary army hotkey. We're going to queue that around to have a look about the map. And look at that. That's a bunch of Roach Ravager. Okay, so we're going to move our tank to the natural and all these units down here. We're going to rally everything there. We're going to tech lab. Lift, lift. All right. Marauder, Marines, lots of Marines once those are landed. Build a tank. Rally there. All right, build depots as well. Do a full macro cycle, even though you're, you're defending right now. And then do the next step, which is SCVs on gas. Try to make plus one. All right, now we're under attack. Let's try to repair our bunker, guys. Oh God, my Marines just ran outside, you morons! All right, should have, should have looked at that instead of taking gas now. Remember, guys, Alt plus Repair Hotkey, and the SCVs are all on Auto Repair. Sorry, we should have used Hold Position. If we're if we're looking away that much, we do have to use Hold Position a little more, or just go stare at our units a little bit more. It's my bad. We'll put another tank down here. And guys, Viking. Let's go scout. We want to check, is there a third base? And if not, let's scout around the base. So go home, do a macro cycle. Okay, build some SCVs, build some mules. Whoa, build more Marauders and Marines. Let's try and stim. We don't even have stim starter, do we? Everything's fighting. There's nothing else I can do here other than pull workers, guys. Nothing else I can do there. Oh, okay. Seems like we're being all in. More Marauders, more Marines, more tanks, and more medevacs. We're going to siege this tank as well. Full macro cycle. So I just did build SCVs, which I don't really need, right? I think I can put these guys back on mining. What's an easier way of doing that, guys? Control click idle worker, select them there. Problem, that takes Gary and Bruce. So be careful using that select all idle worker button at this stage when you still need to build depots. Let's get stim and shields. Let's get concussive. That's all really late because we've been very distracted. Start plus one armor. And we're not going to be able to push for another minute, minute and a half. Okay, guys? Isn't smurfing harmful to the small community SC2 has? 
Guys, hit up Tethril there with our info on our organically farmed uh, noobs here. We're a Whole Foods community that only uh, consume organic farm raised. These are not factory farmed noobs. These are all organic, so don't worry. It's all ethically sourced, um, farm to table. Farm to table, bronze to GM. So um, it's, uh, it's all a good time. More tanks coming out right now. Let's go. We're gonna have a nice arc of tanks. We're probably not too worried. Oh no, he's still out there. Let's control group our army, shall we, guys? All right, A move forward to defend the tanks, but actually he's not filing the tanks. He's just picking off some depots. In this scenario, guys, box SCVs, right click, shift, right click, shift there. So what I'm saying is repair the two depots and then go back to mining, okay? Let's lower those depots. How's Stim and Shields doing, guys? Looks like they're not too far away. So we can move out. Basically, the moment Stim done, I think we have enough units to do this. So what are we doing? Four Marauders, about 50 Marines, another tank, and then some other stuff. Oh, okay, he's moving in. Just A move our whole army, guys. That was an interesting micro from my opponent. They clicked their whole army on that one siege tank. Whew. All right, let's unsiege these tanks too. All right, let's go across this map, guys. We go to the staging point. Uh, we do want to scout first, so deselect a marine, deselect a marine, deselect a marine. Pull back. And let those marines get a little ahead, and then we can go forward. All right, so, uh, yeah. Build more tanks, medevacs, marines, marauders, depots. Now you could argue, because this is dragged on, getting a third base is more important than normal. Because our income is going to dry up. So we're going to try and start a third behind this. Because we've been under assault, it's slowed down the game. That's going to be very important. Notice our opponent has done the attack into drone five bases technique. And they have six roaches. So if you guys are ever in doubt, can this army beat the six roaches? This army, can it beat six roaches? So we need to be very technical. Remember, this is the one we learned back in Bronze League. It's called A move in the back of their main and then press stim. Uh, we probably don't even need to siege up. If our units are stuck behind each other, that's an issue. But remember, there's no splash damage with Roach Ravager. We don't need to be as careful in general. And because we just saw mass drones coming out, GG, well played. We knew that our opponent couldn't have any scary army, right? Because our opponent clearly did a big two base all into us. It failed, right? They took some horrendous fights. We can see, you know, I had tanks and a bunker and a wall off, which kind of counters this, right? My build kind of counters their build. Just happens to be that way. But when I scanned and I saw the Marines, what did I see? I saw a lot of drones on this base with the Marine. And then I see a fourth base. So I'm like, you gone from two base to four base. I see drones that are rallying. Now they could technically be transferred from one base to another, but if you see a few drones all spread out like that, usually it means they're popping from eggs. I haven't seen a single bit of army other than six roaches and a spine crawler. And I know I've had a way bigger army than you because I've macroed properly. And I've killed a ton of your roaches. I've lost very few units this game. And now I know that you've spent the last minute or so building hatcheries and droning, which means you're investing in economy, not army. My army should be at least a little bit stronger than yours. Let's check the active forces tab, guys. So you can see active forces. My opponent's army is 125 gas and 1600 minerals. Mine is 6000 minerals and 1600 gas. So my army is so much effing better than their army it is actually disgusting and that's why i'm able to just shove in now technically i could siege the tanks here i could spread out stim some units into each base and do it that way but i figured hey this guy has a fifth base how did i know that because i saw drones transferring up there let's just get in there kill all the tech kill the heart of the zerg rather than overcomplicating it and going around the edges like that yeah ggs cool that was interesting how far my marines chased outside my base, wasn't it, guys? I didn't realize they would, from the Ravages, get baited all the way out there, but I guess it makes sense. So the opponent F2'd the Lings in accidentally. Yeah, he drops the Biles. The Ravages twerk. So I never thought a Ravager booty was very sexy. As you can see, though, the marines have been out here on this terrible Dragon Scales planet for a long time. Let's just say they're starving for simulation, stimulation. They see this little spike sticking out of the butt and they're like, oh, that's the hottest thing I've ever seen. Mm. Let's, let's go out there away from the bunkers and tanks. It's not a good time. A whole bunch of roaches turn around, vomit acid on them. And guys, 
That's why if a sexy lady, a sexy lady in a very poor country seems way too interested in you and she wants you to follow her into a dark alleyway, say no, say no. It's not a good thing. Your, your wallet's gonna, things are gonna happen. She wants to go to the ATM with you. It's not gonna be a good time. Technical bronze to GM info here, guys. But yeah, uh, bring our CVs, put them on repair. Notice the tanks very far back. So if the Ravagers want to do it, if they want to, if they want to mess with me, those Ravagers are going to have to run right up super deep and take very heavy fire to bile the tank down. And uh, then we just tried to continue. We did forget stim and shields for a while, guys, in the heat of what was happening. But we remembered everything else pretty well. So I think we did a pretty good job overall. Yeah. GG's. All right, guys, let's go. We've got ourselves the last game here in Gold League Part 1. And we didn't get to go over nearly as much multitasking as I thought today. But hey, we're really just realizing that our opponents are throwing some interesting things at us. Uh, they're doing a little bit better job of being a bit sneaky in some regards here in Gold League. And in general, uh, I think it's just good getting used to the different flow of the build. I will try to focus a little bit more on that multitasking. But uh, we'll see how we go, of course. Um, this guy is going to go there. Second base, third base, fourth base, fifth base, and camera location are all up and running. <clears throat> so we're going to go reactor, orbital. So orbital, reactor, there we go. Huh? go ahead. Get the command center. And cue him back to mine as well. And we want to go straight into the depot after that. Grab one of those SCVs, build the depot. Camera location one, shift and just shift click it back. All right, guys, looks like we're up against the double gas build. No worries. We're just going to go out of the base and then go down there and hide. Build mule and SCV. And let's build some Marines. All right. Build more SCVs. Go to factory. Let's lower that depot. Second gas after that, and let's send a new SCV to the natural to build that bunker, shall we? All right. So we're going to control group our Marines, because it's TVT, guys. He could be going Reapers, but actually he went Reactor first, so there can't be a Reaper here too early. But there could be some in the near future, so we'll keep our eyes out. More SCVs building. We'll chuck a few dudes on gas, which is very nice for us, and we should be looking okay. Just keep queuing SCVs. And of course, check these SCVs are queued back to minerals. You guys know we always want to be looking at this natural as it finishes, so we can make that orbital straight away. Four Marines into the bunker. Everything else can go to the cliff ledge because it's a TVT here. We want to make sure we don't get caught out. And we get that starport along with that tech lab. All right, keep queuing up SCVs. Those are the priority. And this is looking pretty solid, guys. Full bunker at the front, two marines there. I was going to say, let's check if they've expanded. They have not expanded, guys. Okay, build a few more SCVs. We would drop a mule, but it's 3.30, and they're not expanded. So, tanks, marines, medevacs. It's a one base tank, marine, medevac all in by the looks of it, guys. Let's build our own tank, which we were going to be doing anyway. And what do we really do against that? Just do your standard thing. Build a tank, build a depot. Just literally nothing changes, guys. Just keep macroing and handle it. Do we need another depot? Yeah, okay, just just a single. That's all. We're gonna build a Viking here. And you know what? Actually, we're gonna do something really smart, guys. We're gonna put the starport on the reactor and build a new reactor with the barracks. So we will actually do an advanced response here. Why not? Why not? I might as well show you guys a really clever response. So number one, don't miss any tank production at all. Siege your tank at the front. Other than that, non-stop Vikings, two at a time. As long as you've got control of the skies with the Vikings and you keep building tanks, you should be fine. You can still macro during this, but if you really want, you can start a third gas and that's gonna make sure you can have uninterrupted tank Viking production, okay? To support this, I will need Gary to keep on building depots here. And you can see my main's a little oversaturated, so let's rally to the natural. I'm also not gonna scan, uh, not gonna drop mules right now, guys. We just scan to confirm. Has he started expanding? The answer is no. And look at that. He's marched in and just taken a big tank volley. Let's pull some SCVs to repair. We put some more guys on gas. So those guys are all on auto repair now. And that's just going to help keep me alive, all right? 
Let's go for more tank, more Vikings, and only then building more Marines. Oh, looks like we got blasted, guys. So, we're doing a scan. Oh, run away, run away, guys. <laughs> oh, it was very sloppy. Luckily, we barely win the tank fight. And there's one, there's one Viking there, but I have two. So, let's see. As long as it's still like that, we should be fine. Yeah, this is very specific to TVT, this response, guys. Um, let's just pull back our Vikings for now. And we're going to try and put these rally in not too dangerous position now. Control click, shift two, do a scan, make sure he can't march forward. And there we go. We've got four Vikings. Those auto repair SCVs touch them up. So now we can build another Viking and some other units as well. All right. Those SCVs are getting blasted now. Let's just put those back to mine. Let's do some macro. SCVs, SCVs, SCVs. Sorry, the Vikings pulled home. Right click, shift, hold position. Okay, guys? To give vision. Build marines, build tanks, build vikings, build depots. Okay? Behind it, what else do we do? Keep building SCVs, keep building mules. Queue up another depot, we should be good. Alright. So let's get our vikings out front now. And let's try and break out of this contain, shall we? So, just going to siege all the tanks for now until that barracks is gone. I only got one marine. So if there's no support here, guys, you can see he put focused everything on the tanks and he lost all of his marines moving into my tanks. We can grab our whole ground army, control two, Vikings there as well. And we can just A move this. And the way you want to do this is you want to land the Vikings. If you spread your units out ahead of time, that's good. Just make sure they're all close by. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and run forward, land the Vikings and then A move, okay? So the Vikings are going to land on top of the siege tanks. Everything else A moves forward. And you can see that we can break the line. Now that's a risky maneuver, but it works out very well here. Now we can just chase with this army. And then we can let him escape, get that barracks, and go back to a macro cycle. Build SCVs and mules. Now we didn't need to do that. I could have just moved forward. I also could have built a liberator, which would have easily shut that down. I'll build one now, just in case we can use it in the follow-up. So what are we missing, guys? All of our add-ons. Remember, if the game's messy, just build all four... Sorry, holding the, I wasn't holding shift there, which is why that wasn't working. Oh, he's up here, guys. All right. So he's being very annoying. Let's build two more barracks. And let's also put this SCV on that barracks as well. All right. Going to bring these guys back down. I accidentally did an F2 there, guys, in a bit of panic. Try not to use that until Platinum League. So I broke my own rule there. Sorry about that. Control click the barracks, uh, shift five. Build SCVs and mules. Build marines, build tanks, and build more vikings. Okay. So we've got a lot of vikings now, three. We've got a liberator, which I'm just going to follow a siege tank with. Now the reason why I don't control click the liberator in general, guys, is it runs ahead of your army when you A move. And if it's with the vikings, it, it micros very differently. So let's go out. We're going to A-move a Marine to the Watchtower, A-move Marine to the Watchtower, A-move Marine to the middle of the map. And then we can just chill here. We can also scan. He's expanded. So we know we don't need to worry about a follow-up. Build two tech labs, build two reactors. What are we missing, guys? Engineering Bay. Now we can also take a third base, and the reason is my barracks are so late that I might as well. Third base, fourth base. Just to spend money, that's the only reason. Likewise, we might as well build three more depots, just extra on top of Gary and Bruce, to make sure we can spend our money. Let's get stim and shields. Let's get plus one weapons when we can. Other than that, now our barracks are finally going. We can finally spend our money. If you guys float too much money, you just want to do lots of things at once, especially when there's a messy early game. Marauders, lots of marines, tanks, and medevacs. Now the production's up, you can see... I still have enough money to queue up a full round of units, a really big round of units, and get all my upgrades. But I also squeeze those command centers in, which is going to help me in the long run. So we jump to our third, shift seven, double tap, remake the camera location. Fourth base, double tap, remake the camera location. We can rally those there. And you can see here, we've got the watchtowers, which is great. So we're killing his marine spotters as he's going out. Let's also send some marines out to his expansions. And let's just get used to this. Box these units. Box all those units. Go shift two. Control click the Vikings. Shift three. 
So we've got two A move, three A move, two different control groups. If you guys want to keep them all on one control group and just control click the Vikings, you can do it. But here in Gold League, we're trying to get used to putting those Vikings on different control groups. I think this really helps out. So you can see he's taking control of the map from me. So if you want, you can take it back off him by grabbing maybe a medevac and a bunch of units. And we can go, okay, let's put this on a third army group, right? I'm going to put this on. It shows up as one here, but think of this as like control group three. So they're going to go retake that watchtower and I've stolen them off that, okay? All right. Lots of marauders, lots of marines, lots of tanks, and uh, lots of medevacs. Box these guys, shift control group. Depots. And I think it's time to move, right, guys? Surely it is. So let's move forward here. We'll move up to this staging point in the middle of the map. Let's go look at that squad that we sent over there. Looks like they did win the fight, so we win the watchtower there. And he's trying to go around, so he might try and drop me. So what we're going to do is we're going to go wait on the edge of the map. How do we do it? Deselect and then control one. So we might be able to catch him flying past that and kill that medevac. Just the way his medevac was kind of going around like that looked kind of sus, right? Anyways, let's try to scan his army. Looks like he's got even more medevacs doing that as well. So we can just grab these marines and just put them over here on the edge of our base. You can see. Try to stim and catch those if you want. Not going to be able to kill him, but that's okay. Let's keep building more marauders, more marines, more tanks, more medevacs. What's he got at home? He's, has he got a base there? He does. All right, we're just going to move down the left and kill that base with my main army. And because his army's so out of position, he can't really move to intercept that. We're going to go look at home. So we're going to grab all these guys from the rally. And we're going to try and stim and A move towards that. Unfortunately, we're going to lose it. That's okay. I want to group up a little bit. A move. Let's try to multitask here, guys. Oh, these guys went a bit too deep. We're just going to try and fight out of siege mode. Hopefully we can win that fight. We can see here, we just have to box and stim. Try to move those units forward. And A move. Now, notice I grabbed a bunch of SCVs. What do you do in this scenario, guys? Control click the SCVs. Jump to the natural. Right click on the gas. Deselect one. Right click on the minerals. Go to the fourth. Add to command center hotkey. Make orbital. Let's hold down that SCV count because I just took some losses. You always need to transfer about half of the workers out of your main as well. Once you get past about nine minutes, we're doing that pretty late. Okay. So now we've got this whole army together, right? We can kind of regroup at home. Those guys as well. These guys, shift two. We have guys at our rally. More marauders, more marines, more tanks, more medevacs. Yep. These guys, shift two. These guys, not the SCV, shift two. What's this? Oh, he actually proxied something earlier. I had no idea. All right, so notice we're using our Viking hotkey as well. If you don't want to control two army hotkeys, just click the Vikings on a tank like the Liberator, okay? We're going to push forward again and try to do some damage. Behind this, make sure you've still got new bases coming up. So we're just going to rebuild the third, rebuild the fifth. What's the other thing? If the game drags on, upgrades. Armory, second armory engineering bay. So we've got a little bit of continuation, but at its core, we're still just building marines, marauders, tanks, and vikings on medevacs, okay? These guys, shift two. Looks like he sent a couple marine scouts out there. Let's just A, move the watchtower, deselect a few marines. Come back, control two. Has he retaken this base? He has. And he's kind of walling it off as well. Isn't this cute? So what we're going to do here, guys, is he have vikings? He's got only two vikings. We're scanning everything. All the tanks are in the natural, so we can just do a doom drop is the easiest way to finish this game. Just look at your opponent's defenses. It's a pretty dangerous move to do. So what we're going to do, put those guys on that number one hotkey. The rest goes here. And they're just going to boost in and unload in the main base, okay? What's going on by We're getting dropped. Oh, I can't look at that, can I? Oh! He guessed what we were doing! Oh my god, but we have so many units that it's okay. We can stim, we can siege the tanks. That's done. Don't even look at it. We need to go do other stuff. Okay. These guys are going to come over here. He's going to get that command center, which really sucks. So I need to rally my command centers here. Shift 7. Shift 7. Go to that third. Hold the worker key down and rebuild. Now, the reason I'm not running down to kill him is he could pick up and drop in here. So we're waiting with those units to receive him. These guys stimming into the main. This is what we're talking about, guys. 
We knew he was going to do that, so we're ready for it. Stim on top. Okay, now that's dealt with. Now I can retake that base and everything. These guys are going to attack this bottom left side. Okay. And these guys will eventually get cleaned up in here. Let's pull away from his siege tanks. Let's just stim the bio. We just want to put it down there where it's kind of killing depots and infrastructure. Okay. And we can put a medevac over there as well. And then these medevacs can come back and join our main army. There's a lot of stuff happening. So we got an army there. Has he moved his tanks away? He did. Okay, so we were hoping he might move his tanks away, guys. So we're going to be able to stim this army in from this side now. And if we can get a good siege up position, we should be able to just win. So we're going to just stim that in. And try to move right into the choke point. Control click, siege the tanks. And it looks like we've managed to out position him by keeping those units separate. Woo! Very stressful game there. Really nice push from our opponent with the... Was it a double factory push? I think it must have been a double factory push. But at the end of the game, we managed to come out on top. Really well played there by our opponent. And trust a random player to bring out a nice strategy like that. Really well done. So it was a factory and a starport at home and a factory and a second barracks on the front. Okay. <laughs> that was kind of crazy. That was crazy. Um, very lucky that I took the Viking control then. Because if I didn't, didn't, I would have been severely outnumbered. So in TVT, if you're ever in this sort of position where your opponent's trying to like one base all in you with Viking tank or Medivac Marine tank, as long as you can get your starport onto your reactor and build Vikings, it's going to mean you can control the skies and they really can't push through your tank line and you could just keep macroing up. I almost really messed up at the very start of this because he pushed forward a little bit faster than I expected and I was doing things like dropping that mule which is really should not have been. I should have been saving scans to help me defend. Luckily, I kill a few Marines, but like here, it's when this tank derps forward. I didn't realize his tank was even in vi vision. So my tank, if I had a scan, I would have already killed his siege tank while he was still shooting the bunker. But then he almost kills these two tanks. And if he killed those, he can just unsiege, move forward, siege his tanks here, and I'm pretty screwed. I could technically break out with a Liberator, but it would be much harder. So you got to be very careful with those units rallying in. And notice we set a much more conservative rally point uh, a little bit later to here, rather than being so close to the action where they can get baited in. But the moment we have more Vikings, we're able to do it. So very important to get that Viking advantage. And once you have the Viking advantage, like right here, I should probably be building a Liberator already. And just using the Liberated Breakout is much less stressful than the Viking Land. Remember, the reason why we did the Viking Land is because I went, oh, I have the same tank count as you, but I've also got all these Vikings. And you've got, what, three Marines supporting? So I kind of felt like, oh, I can actually break out because you don't really have that much stuff. Our numbers on the ground are very similar. You have the advantage of being sieged up, but with the Vikings landing, they can be massive. So we just went for a bit of a YOLO here. Four tanks and five marines with five vikings landing against just four tanks two marines so numbers wise the numbers were good enough that as long as we especially with the landing on top of his siege tanks it worked out but that's a hard call to make instead i could have just moved a liberator forward and killed the siege tanks with that as long as you make sure your siege tanks aren't too far behind the liberator yeah